I've often thought about what would the perfect player look like. It might play the game in a completely different way from the way that we play it. As a chess player, you want to know more about chess, you want to get deeper, and there is so much still to learn. Alpha Zero played a match against Stockfish, which was the strongest computer that we all knew, and it won the match. And all of a sudden I thought, wow, you know. Does this really work? How does it know how to do it? I started thinking, oh, it's quite interesting, quite interesting. And there's just a couple of games that went bang. These were very exciting games, very attacking games, giving pawns away right at the early stages of the game. The other computers were thinking, well, that's too early. AlphaZero doesn't have any rules. It learns through experience. I really didn't think there was room for this huge attacking style, yeah. you know, never in my wildest dreams. There's even more depth than we thought in chess. It's like discovering the secret notebooks of some great player from the past. It explains AlphaZero's strategies. How does AlphaZero think? Alpha Zero blows apart what traditional engines are doing. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this stream. Welcome, Mark. We had indeed noticed, you know, that um, that you'd missed a few of our streams. And uh, yeah, black mark against you there, Mark. But uh, good to have you back on the stream. So today, actually, we, we've um, we're going to have a, a mixed a sort of a mixed uh, a mixture of uh, of games, if we're lucky, because uh, we have the final round of the women's uh, championship. And we also have the final of the Blitz Championship as well. So, um, well, we're going to we're going to be having a little um, a little go at trying to follow everything at the same time. Uh, could be a bit confusing, but um, we'll try and keep it uh, all as clear as possible for you. Welcome In the Women's Kasha. Championship, we have um, uh, the final round of the standard play. Um, there are twenty players in the tournament. Um, we do already know the the winner, uh, who is Grandmaster Ketavan Arakamia Grant from Scotland, um, and she has played an incredibly impressive tournament to get to six out of six so far. Uh, so we will see if she goes for seven out of seven, or whether she's happy to be a little bit more peaceful in the last round. Uh, but she's going into the last round a point and a half clear. Uh, so whatever happens, we have a new champion, Ketty Arakamia Grant. Um, well done to her. Uh, she is going to be playing today, Lara Puta from Ireland. And then on board two, we have um, a very interesting lineup, junior player Nina Pert, who is white against Dagny Sixaiti. Um, they are... Uh, uh, sorry, Dagny's got four and a half and Nina has four. Um, and so this is a match to see who can get to second place. Another player on four is also Tashika Aurora. Um, she will play on board three against Trisha Kanyamarala uh, from Ireland. And then on board four, we have Welsh player Olivia Smith against English Maria Emilia Nova. Board five, Alice Lampard from Scotland against Zovani. Um, then Julie O against Imogen Dyson. We have Hannah Lowry O'Reilly against Ray Lynn Posadas from England. Uh, May Catterby against Rhea Rukaya. Georgia Headlong against Kate Walker. And Scottish Florence Wilson against Irish Susan Barry. Uh, so that's the lineup for the women's today. In the Fantastic. Yeah. In the Blitz, we don't know the exact lineup, uh, but we do know we have some very strong players in the Blitz final. Um, to give you an idea of a few of them, we have uh, Gawain Jones, um, Amit Ghazi, John Spillman, uh, Nick Pert, Dr. John Nunn, uh, we have Richard Pert, the twin brother of Nick Pert, and also the father of Nina Pert, who we're, we're seeing playing in the women's. Um, we have Matthew Wadsworth, William Claridge Hansen, who we've seen playing um, in the Open, both of those. Um, and you're going to remind me who Plimsoll is, Matthew. <laughs> uh, that's uh, Plimsoll is Peter Large. 
Peter Large, and we have Peter Large, yeah. So we've got a lot of top names uh, that we can follow in the Blitz, as well as um, people who've been doing qualifiers throughout the week. So, so we've got uh, a number of people that got through and a number of qualifiers. Hi there, Peter. Hi, Peter. You're not playing in the Blitz? <laughs> okay, so... Um, yeah, it's uh, one minute two. I think I'm going to share my screen. I've um, I've been whilst Natasha was talking, I was uh, ticking in lots of uh, follow, follow, follow commands. Yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> oh, now you miss out on qualifying. Hard luck. Oh, That's, uh, it's um, we're going to see. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm following everyone. So we should hopefully um, uh, get some games popping up in the Blitz as well. And um, now we're going to swap between uh, between everything. We'll see how that goes. Now let me just uh, share my screen chess.com here we come make that large make us tiny and we should be good to go that's uh uh excellent i think the screens yeah the screens are uh, pretty big there isn't it yeah that's good yeah, no, that's so good. um that's all looking good so um just gonna get to back go back to live chess and we're going to see as soon as the games start, we should be, uh, we should hopefully, uh, hopefully have everything that we need. It's, uh, um, yeah, I'm not quite sure how they're um, uh, doing. Ah, there is Ketty. Ketty's uh -huh. been uh, started. I'm not quite sure how the Blitz is going, actually, whether the, ar I don't think the arbiters are starting the games. I think everything's just sort of uh, Is it a tournament within chess.com? I think so, yes. So, um, um, but we'll, um, I, I mean, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. But I would Do imagine. Do we know a way of following the tournament? I think maybe we don't. No, we don't actually know that. Um, um, oh, could you maybe. maybe that we'll, be a, yeah. Sorry? Just start, uh, could you maybe ask the question to um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's what Nigel I was or Danny? That, that would be fantastic. So, but anyway, we've got, um, oh, we've got uh, Lara, Lara Puta against Ketavan. And Ketavan is not. Ketavan is not playing her um, her normal King's Indian. She is actually oh. playing a Czech Benoni. Um, oh, yeah. So she, she's uh, maybe for surprise value, um, but also she maybe is using this as a chance to try out some things she's always wanted to try. Um, indeed. Indeed. I mean, the, the Czech Benoni is, is one of those openings that... Um, so there's a, there's a few good quotes about it. Uh, Tony Miles... Um, played the uh, A56. Well done, Mark. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's an uh, excellent ECO reference. Uh, Tony Miles uh, said that he always used to, um, uh, he always used to uh, play it once every five years because it took him five years to forget how bad it was. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, well, Michael Adams once, uh, once coined the phrase that something was a bit Czech Benoni to yes. mean that it was um, extremely dodgy. So, uh, so you, know, you, you look at everything. So, yeah. oh, it's so a bit Czech. Bit, <laughs> we used to say Czech, that all really. the time. Yeah. A little bit Czech, really. <laughs> so um, it's uh, uh, yeah. So a little bit, um, but I mean, actually, it's been um, was very popular with uh, with some of the British players. Um, uh, William Hartston uh, played it. Um, was a big expert on it um, in the nineteen seventies, and um, uh, um, obviously Tony Miles um, was uh, playing this. I'm very surprised that uh, that Ketty is playing this really. Um, but okay, that's uh, we're going to see how it goes. That's uh, quite interesting. Um, let's move on. We've got um, Chess Queen 960. That's uh, Tashika Aurora against Secret Superstar. Oh, I'm getting quite a sharp, a sharp variation of the Catalan here. So um, um, D takes C4, uh, Knight F3 and A6. So Black looking to play B5 to um, uh, to hold the pawn. This is a very risky line. Um, White playing uh, an, a very early Knight E5. And black um, coming with a bishop b4 check to um, uh, a slightly disruptive bishop b4 check. So uh, the idea is if um, um, if you played bishop d2, then uh, I could actually just take on d4. But um, expecting white to play um, knight c3. Um, and then I, I guess I'm trying to remember what the theory is here, but I think it's uh, it's knight d5 in this position. Let's. Uh, I really should know this actually, but. Um, it's like many things that I should know. <laughs> many things I often forget as well. But um, uh, I'm just going to have a quick look at my databases just to see. 
Um, so here takes knight f3, a6, knight e5. Um, bishop b4 check. And let's see, I think uh, knight c3 was what I was expecting and uh, has indeed been played. Um, I mean, black could play um, uh, all sorts of move, but yeah, knight d5 again, as I said, is the is the main line, and black's going to follow up with um, with b5 and hold on to this pawn. So it's uh, Catalan is quite um, is quite a um, um, well a solid opening for white. <laughs> Benoni means son of sadness, <laughs> indeed, yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, and the Czechs do have quite a quite a, a self, uh, self-deprecating and sl sometimes slightly uh, depressed sense of humor. I've uh, heard some, uh, some very funny Czech jokes that are always, uh, you know, about things going wrong somehow. So uh, maybe the Czech Benoni is uh, a son of, an extreme son of sadness or something, but uh, it's, um, uh, yeah, so this one's gonna be an interesting sharp one. Now I want to see Mad Alien too, really. Oh, this is uh, a nice uh, opening French winner. And White's played, um, that's White Nina Pert, Let's play bishop d2, which is um, um, not a bad choice if you want to avoid the um, the very sharpest lines after um, after a3. Um, the simple idea is that white's going to play knight b5, swap off the dark squared bishops, and then try and claim that your structure is better. Um, it's uh, um, knight h6 is um, was recommended in oh, a, wow. um, a fairly recent book by um uh, emmanuel berg who's a big uh, swedish uh, french expert 2600 gm uh knight e7 is the most normal move as well and both are fine for black in principle but uh, um interesting uh, idea now maria emlianova we are not going to get opposite side castling with not maria today. We've had a lot of that, but um, uh, here White, uh, Olivia Smith has played quite solidly here, a, a sort of reversed, uh, yeah, King's Indian um, uh, uh, game. And uh, I suppose uh, Maria's got to decide whether to play c5 and knight c6, or whether to play something maybe like knight c6 and play e5 and have a go. This is more like a reverse King's Indian, and this is more like a reversed uh, Perk. So we're going to see what um, what happens there. Oh, uh, I can see some blitz games uh, starting here as well. Okay. So um, have a, a quick switch over to uh, a blitz game. Uh, it'll go quickly. We've got uh, Harry Greave here with White against uh, Amit Ghazi. I mean, uh, actually, you know, uh, from the very uh, first rounds, you're going to get these uh, um, very uh, um, uh, strong matchups because it's an extremely strong field. Um, I mean, we've got um, the gems at the top, but uh, there's a number of names there who are, you know, very, very strong blitz players. So um, it's uh, this looks like a Mora Gambit, uh, uh, Natasha. I mean, uh, we've sacrificed a, a pawn on uh, uh, a pawn, the pawns on the C and D files. It, yeah. it wasn't actually. We might not get it back though. It looks pretty, pretty promising it, to get it back because you could that, take on uh, E7, couldn't you, if you really wanted to. Well, but it's never really the idea to get the pawn back, is it? In the moral, I thought it was the idea was to get, a, <laughs> get an incredible attack. Yeah. Ah, okay, that's uh, um, so. Um, ah, that's quite interesting. That's Let's carry on with it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll carry on with the, the women's for now, but it's good we're, we're actually following these. So um, yeah. we're going to uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, pick a few to concentrate on when they start. Now this is um, uh, Alice Lampard against uh, Zoe Varney, horsey chess. Yeah, Zoe's, Zoe's played a number of very good games actually, hasn't she? We've been uh, following her games with pleasure. She beat Chris Finn uh, in the uh, in the Open uh, yesterday in a, a game that turned around suddenly. Um, oh, there was a king, wasn't there? A, a king, white king in the centre. Indeed, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, lining up her major pieces against it. Indeed, there was what, a bit what of a people mis being lined up against her king as well. To be fair, indeed, yeah, it was a very exciting position. I, I got it a bit wrong. I think I thought White was uh, was completely winning, but I'm not sure that uh, that that was correct. And um, uh, unfortunately, Chris did a mi uh, did a misclick uh, um, to give away his queen. But um, I think uh, um, by that stage, Zoe was um, was was quite a bit on top. So, um, uh, but this one's um, a uh, um, an Italian game. We've seen um, quite a few of these um, also in the open as well. And um, uh, um, well, White's um, playing slightly old-fashioned, actually, going for uh, um, uh, early expansion with a4, b4. They used to do this in the old days. Uh, nowadays, they tend to uh, play, um, try and play the knight over as quickly as possible, and also retreat the bishop to b3. But this is um, perfectly fine too. Um, 
What does white normally do? And what I think Zoe will do, probably knight e7 to g6, um, and then uh, play c6 and d5, you know, and uh, and just try and uh, just try and break through. So um, interesting stuff. Then we've got uh, we've got poisonous mushrooms against um, uh, Imogen Dyson. Um, so this is a um, uh, actually transposed to a Grand Prix attack, slightly unusual move order. Uh, this this actually a move order that um, that Gawain Jones um, uh, played a lot. He's a big expert in these. I think he even wrote a, a book about uh, about these systems. Um, so with a knight c3 and bishop b5, uh, d6, uh, then white takes and goes f4. Um, and we're back into a pretty standard uh, Grand Prix attack. Um, white will aim to play um, f5, well, queen e1 to h4, um, f5, bishop h6, knight g5, that sort of stuff. Um, the key thing about this structure is that, um, you know, it's kind of natural for black to um, uh, to play d5, you know, do something in the center. But then this pawn becomes very weak, and often you find it getting target, targeted with a b3, bishop a3, knight a4. I mean, extremely, um, uh, the Grand Prix attack, uh, extremely powerful um, in the 1970s and 80s in, in on the UK weekend circuit. Still played a Grandmaster level. Oh, yeah, still, I used to play that all the time when I was a indeed, kid. Indeed, indeed. And still played a Grandmaster lots, level. Wins as well with the uh, queen h4 bishop h6 knight g5 plan um, yes good checkmates uh, but then sometimes if they if they know it and they'll get their knight in on d4 and uh, your c2 pawn can become weak or or d3 pawn sometimes would become weak and then um yeah i stopped playing it after that well, I still played at the Grand Master level, still a, a yeah. very dangerous weapon, actually. So um, uh, one of those weapons that, that um, you know, people sort of found ways to um, to uh, uh, to get around it, but uh, it started coming back again. So um, uh, anyway, it should be an interesting game there. Now we've got um, Han O'Reilly against Raylin Posadas, who's been um, regularly in our chat saying hello. Um, and uh, um, I think she was uh, she was playing the bits. I think she narrowly missed out, didn't she? The top three qualifiers. She? And, uh, yeah, she said she, she was looking to see. Last night she was she was uh, she was waiting for it to be confirmed. Yeah, I'll just check it. Okay. So, um, but anyway, we've got um, she's got a, a King's Indian here. There's been a London, well, a sort of a, a sort of a mix of a London system because we've had uh, Bishop F four together with C four, which is um, slightly unusual nowadays. Oh, no, no, she's, she's in. in. She's in. Hey, she's in way well done, Raymond. So, uh, and with a knight on e2, so this is a very, a very, very unusual system for uh, for white. Um, and Raylin's played it very, um, uh, very directly, uh, just playing uh, e5 here. And white's got to decide are you going to put the bishop on g5 or are you going to go back to g3? Um, uh, I suppose with um, with the g5, um, if you go Hi, to uh, Hey, Oscar. So if you go to G5, uh, the idea is um, you're going to claim that um, um, that uh, these these are weaknesses, basically. You know, you can play Queen C2, maybe. Um, if you go to G3, then you, um, you're, you've you decided that uh, you know, black can get your bishop but without uh, advancing the king's side. I think I've probably played Bishop G5 in this position. Um, you know, just uh, try and be a little bit more annoying for a bit longer. Um, so, um, but an interesting position, interesting system, actually. I've, uh, I've never seen this before. I mean, often you do have to say that um, against these combinations of um, a bishop moving to uh, f4 and the pawn moving to c4, black does often go for c5 systems. Um, where you put the bishop on g7, um, and then you you play for a c5 system because uh, well you know this um uh, this diagonal is quite awkward and um well you know all sorts of moves like queen a5 check knight e4 you're kind of missing this one for some solidity you know protecting b2 and covering uh, attacks there so that's often the way that it goes but uh, obviously d6 and e5 is a, a very reasonable and normal way to play the curious parrot oh natasha this is one for you look at the curious parrot let me see um, well, actually, um, um, uh, May Catterby, that's uh, Thin Rose Leapfrog, has played yeah. the King's Gambit. Fantastic. I like it a lot. So okay. what have we got? We've had b4, knight h5, bishop c4, bishop e7. Knight g5 was played. Um, so um, 
bring the queen into the attack castles, and then we've got to see what uh, what White is going to do here. Um, you can just castle now. Pick up the H pawn. Fine. You could castle. You could go H four. Yeah. Um, I mean, H four <laughs> is uh, sort of. I mean, H four is quite fun actually. Mm. If, if Bishop H six, you see, I, 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 yeah. I want to go G four. That's what I want to oh, do. Oh my goodness. So I just running G five, you know, to, yeah. uh, to win the bishop, I and like if it. you take there, then I take on here. So yeah, and then you can go long. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, maybe H four, you should go Bishop F six, but um, um, I mean, uh, then we, I don't know, we're going to go Bishop F four, yeah. yeah, and we'll go castles, and you know, just go for it like that. I'm not sure that's very yeah. good, but um, uh, <laughs> I do like the idea of uh, of H four. I have to say, um, I mean, another idea of, uh, similar to that would be to go G three. Um, um, and if you go bishop f6, I mean, I might go gf to have the chief file open. Nah, not sure about that, but um, anyway, well done playing a king's gambit. That's what we like to see. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've got um, um, a um, uh, a Karakhan with 92, which uh, um, quiz question there does anyone know what the name of this system is? The system with 292 against the Karakhan. I'm going to give you um, so uh, put it into the chat if you know. It's uh, um, I'd be amazed if you do know, but um, uh, it does actually have a have a name. So um, um, so oh yes, this is um, this is actually um, th there's a, a chess magazine, a German chess magazine. Uh, what is it called? Kaiser, I think Kaiser. I'll just put it into the chat. Um, so it's called Kaisiba, and um, it's a um, uh, it's a German magazine, and it's all about strange, bizarre openings. And um, when I started uh, playing again after a long break back in two thousand ten, I uh, one of the things I did was I ordered a complete uh, um, uh, uh, the complete all the back copies of um, of this magazine, and they have all sorts of weird system. And this one, this uh, this um, sort of kind of wing gambit sort of thingy, was um, was one of the openings in it. So um, C takes B four D four. Um, so uh, C takes B four D four, and you're just going to play. Um, you're just going to play a wing gambit, um, okay. which is quite quite good fun. Um, Bishop G four A takes C three. H3, G4, Bishop G6, Knight G3, E6. Well, we're going to see how it goes. I might actually have been tempted somewhere around here to play Bishop A3 with White, because if you then go E6, I take on F8, and um, you know you've um, uh, you've um, Hi, Sean. Uh, you've lost the hey Sean, you've lost the right to castle, but. Um, um, but okay, this is quite interesting. I think Mike Surtees, who we've mentioned before, the man behind the revolutionary op opening theory, ROT. Look it up on the internet. <laughs> the man who only moves pawns in the opening. Um, I think he also played this system uh, with uh, with knight e2. So does anyone know what this knight e2 system is going to do? I'm going to reveal it in um, in a little while. Just go look at one more game. Oh, what is this? Um, uh, a bishop b5 Sicilian. Check Sicilian. Let me just. Um, it's a bit unfortunate. They, uh, there we are. Um, always getting black at the bottom. So takes takes. C four knight c six, b four, and um, uh, black has gone for a very sharp pawn grab. Uh, these are known. I mean, uh, actually, in this position, queen g four. Uh, oops, sorry. Arr, keep on doing that. Queen g four is known as a pawn grab to take on e four, take on g two. Very risky pawn grab. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Black did it in a slightly different way. Knight takes d4, e5. It's a very ugly move in principle. Um, and I think something like knight c2 here would be very sensible. But um, um, knight f3, knight f6, knight c3 happened. And then Black went full in with queen g4, hitting the pawn on g2 and hitting the pawn on e4 as well. Um, uh, I would give a don't do this at home warning, I think, because... Uh, <laughs> It's a very risky one. Um, white went to uh, knight b5. Uh, queen takes e4 check. Bishop e3. King d7. White went rook c1 to protect the c pawn. 
a6 knight c3 queen c4 well blacks okay oh taking all the points and stopping castling as well for now that's actually that is actually rather annoying that one because uh um yeah uh, uh rather unfortunate i suppose what you should do really with uh what you want to do is to go knight a4 really yeah. to uh on B6. but um, it's a little bit annoying yeah it's a, it's a little bit annoying um just as this is annoying that it keeps on defaulting to black um because uh, after queen b4 we give a queen b4 check and if bishop d2 we go back to b5 and uh you've lost the ability to go knight b6 and the queen's mm. protecting the king from castling so well i said don't try this at home but this may well have turned out um quite decently for um uh for um for black here um I guess uh, probably what uh, White should do is just go B3. Uh, the Queen maybe goes to E6, I'm not sure, or G4, E6 maybe. And then castles here and uh, just claim two pawns of compensation. Um, could be a sharp old game. I mean, Black's going to have quite a few um, um, a few struggles to get its uh, its pieces. Uh, yeah, Nigel Short played it, but um, it's actually called... The quiz question was... Wait, wait, Oscar didn't hear the quiz question, maybe. Oscar, what is it called? What's the variation called? I'm going to type it in very soon. Short variation. No, no, no. The short variation, that's uh, when the, in the advance, when you go knight f3 and bishop e2. Uh, it's actually called the Barendrecht variation. Um, which is, um, um, that's right, yeah, which is named after a Dutch player of the 1970s called, um, I think it was uh, Joel Barendrecht, um, and uh, quite strong, uh, I am, I think, and uh, played in a number of the uh, of the big Dutch tournaments, and um, uh, he um, he got a few good results with it. So, um, but that's the, the name of the system. So that's a useful, um, a useful piece of trivia that you can, impress people at parties with um uh but uh it's actually played some fine games so he was a good player that uh uh, uh joel barandrecht so um uh if you just search in chess space you can uh, you can see i don't know what's happened to him uh um it, yeah probably be reasonably uh reasonably old by now um i think he stopped i thought he stopped playing chess at some stage but um uh let's have a look um Should we check on in on the top three again and then look at some blitz yeah i mean uh, i can it's only um, um I'm, I'm looking to see there's no blitz games going on oh, at the okay. moment so um it looks like richard pert beat gm norfolk uh nick pert drew um, GM john norfolk, spielman, that's familiar to me um G john spielman won uh gawain jones won his game and uh harry Andrew green and Garzi drew yeah so uh it's um uh, but we're gonna have a look oh what has happened here Ooh, White's played very aggressively here. Um, maybe mixing uh, mixing plans a little bit. So um, bishop b7. So um, it is actually possible to play f4 in this position. Um, I, I have actually seen it, although it's a little bit um, um, aggressive. So White played uh, a very normal move, g3. Black played a very early knight a6 and knight c7. Um, looking for b5. Um, and um, White played the very aggressive f4 here. Um, he takes f4, and now normally you would take back with a pawn, although yeah. it's a little bit risky here. But Black took back with the um, with the bishop, knight g4, knight f3. It's actually quite interesting. I mean, because Black's played this knight a6 to c7, you don't get this normal occupation of the e5 square with a knight. So. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, black, there's going to be some sort of battle around the e5 square, but it is quite risky um, what, what white is doing because you could end up simply with um, with black having control of, uh, of the e5 square or the dark squares and, um, you know, and, and there being some problems. But, uh, um, but yeah, um, we're, uh, we'll see how that one turns out. That should be... This is uh, one, Kessie trying out something a little bit different from what she normally plays um, as the black side here. Um, and she has already won the tournament, um, so she is trying to get seven out of seven. She's on six out of six so far. Uh, Mark, you don't have to go on the naughty step all the time. I, I did hear from Santa that you have been basically a good boy throughout the uh, throughout mm -hmm. the year, so uh, it's uh, you can come off the naughty step there. Mm -hmm. It's um, uh, elite player against Madeline um, Nina Nina Pert now. Um, 
Yeah, now, D takes C5. Is D takes C5 a normal move? I thought... You do often do that, don't you, in this system? Yeah, I, I thought that knight B5 was how it was normally played. Let me just have a, um, a quick look uh, there. D4, D5. C3, bishop B4. c5 bishop d2 knight e7 now i do believe uh normally knight b5 is the um yeah it's the way that you play it um yeah. d takes c5 has been done before though um so uh black played uh castles which is which feels a little bit early somehow bishop d3 yeah i mean queen g4s are often quite normal um so after castles Queen g4s are quite common you know sort of uh hitting the bishop on b4 and also eyeing uh, the g7 square um bishop d3 has been played before um and knight d7 uh we're following some uh, some fairly good games here um and now white um white has often played queen h5 which is quite you know quite common with uh, uh bishop d3 but uh, queen g4 has also been played so you never know maybe nina really is still uh, still following uh, um her theory here yeah we've got some we've got yeah. some uh, some good players here so um Ooh. Black takes on e5. Can we do we have sacks? Well, we, oh, we, we might, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we might just take the bishop, uh, then. Um, so I mean, black's um, normally going to play, um, I mean, it might play, um, uh, bishop c5 is one fairly normal thing. Um, bishop c3 seems to have been the um, uh, the main move, um, all the time, followed by taking on c5 and taking on d3. You know, which uh, just to um, uh, neutralize this, um, uh, neutralize this uh, attack on the diagonal, and it should sort of be should sort of be uh, fine for um, uh, for uh, uh, for black here, really. So let's have a look. Then we've got um, uh, this one was uh, was going to get quite sharp, wasn't it? Um, it was this Catalan. Black didn't go go, go knight d five. Um, yeah, white can also often try and sacrifice just uh, another pawn with castles, but uh, white called a halt to that, went to b5, castles, and now black took on c3, um, which I think is uh, is fairly fairly normal in this position. Um, castles, bishop c3, um, b takes c3, and castles. So um, yeah, I mean we're still we're still sort of following uh, uh, mainline theory here. I mean Black will aim to go Bishop B seven and Knight D seven, and White's got to work out um, how he wants to do this. I mean um, typical ideas are A four to uh, to put some pressure on the pawn there, um, and also um, a general kingside advance with E four, F four, G four, etc. Um, um, yeah, I mean, there have been quite a few games with this. Um, one of White's ideas, actually, is to go um, uh, A4 here. Let me just uh, bring up an analysis board. Um, A4, and if you go Bishop B7, we've got these uh, uh, sneaky ideas, uh, Queen B1, for example. Rook B1 is also possible. Uh, I'm attacking B5, and if you defend it with C6, then I've got this move knight takes c4 and uh, b7 oh, yeah. is hanging. A very common uh, and uh, sneaky way of playing. Um, funnily enough, there was um, uh, a big grandmaster game, Bolagan Nidic in this, and black played c5. You know, so maybe maybe black uh, saw this and, uh, and actually calculated that this could be uh, could be done. But, um, but you've still got the common. same trick though, haven't you? Yeah, but you're attacking the you're attacking the center then, so it's uh, yeah. you know, it's uh, it's uh, maybe uh, a slightly different. Uh, scenario you know you can bring your pieces out take c3 i mean you're doing this on purpose then uh, you know that's yeah. point. but um uh but anyway that's a, a very common trick in these positions and the other idea would be to go e4 um and maybe to go g4 and then f4 and uh, try and get a big um a big attack there i mean a4 is um is in a way slightly less risky because uh, the chance of you uh, regaining a pawn on b5 are quite high somehow and uh, well then you're not going to be a pawn down e4 f4 is more uh, caveman stuff the sort of stuff we'd expect roll rock troll to play <laughs> um let's have a look shall we go into the uh have a little look at a, at a blitz game that's happening here. This is uh, William Claridge Hanson Black against Amit Garzi. We know both of those from the Open. Um, so uh, Amit, a, a very strong blitz player. I'm sure William uh, 
William will also be a dangerous blitz player because he's, um, uh, yeah, I mean, he's uh, um, pretty dangerous. But um, here, Amit seems to be doing the business here. Um, one, two, three, four pawns against four. Um, uh, where it's gonna, probably going to be three against three. Um, and uh, generally looking good. Knight d6 check, always good uh, yeah. blitz practice to swap off pieces. And uh, that knight could have been a little bit awkward. Oh, but wait a minute. Um, we've got king e6 here, haven't we? King e6. Oh, that and was then, the, oh that yes. Was and then six. Six. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh, Which suddenly, uh, suddenly, black is black is uh, is uh, well, certainly not worse. I mean, you have to go knight f5. This is um, uh, not at all what you're looking for. Oh, Amit must be kicking himself, unless he's got a great way of playing somehow. But I don't think he has. I think um, I mean, you can't you can't retreat. You've got to do it. So he's going to take. He's going to yeah. take off. You're not going to risk knight h6 now. So maybe maybe knight g3. Oh, then we've got e3. Knight h6 oh, knight played. H6. Okay. Oh, 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 that wasn't, uh, I don't think that was, a, there was, there was something better than that, I'm sure. But, uh, uh, oh, this is quite dangerous. Ooh, though. Quite good though for black. 95 will go e3, so 93 king f4. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 my no. goodness. I was about to shout it out. Oh, dear me. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. The problem is rook g2, there's rook c3. Oh, my goodness. Um, I should go e3. Yeah. Uh, this, no, this is not, not. Oh, e3, there might have been rook c3 anyway. So, um, uh, yeah, this is going to be losing then. Oh, my goodness me. Oh, what a shame after, after. well, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's uh, it's blitz, right? That's that's what happens. What is the actual time now? Is it three three plus two? Did they three plus two. Three plus two, that's right. So, um, yeah, white's got, uh, white's, <laughs> as always, white's got a few uh, technical difficulties to overcome uh, just to... Uh, I mean, they're not real technical difficulties, but yeah, in Blitz, uh, uh, everything suddenly becomes difficult. Um, uh, I would recommend actually just going for the B pawn, giving this H pawn, and then um, uh, try to round up this one. That should all be possible. B5, yeah, so we're going to take it. Rook takes H3, Rook B4, that's very good. And you're going to get a Knight C5. Um, so uh, Rook H4, that's a, a decent way of playing. You know, you're sort of uh, thinking of little things like this. Um, could always be tricks. It's, um, yeah, this is always, always very difficult, this, you know. I mean, um, uh, in Blitz, you can uh, lose anything. But, of course, with an increment, um, it's very, very, oh, knight f, no, not knight f3. Don't fall for that. Because <laughs> <laughs> he takes f3, winning the whole house. But, um, yeah, that's the thing about Blitz. Rook a4 check now. Let's just, uh, let's just say calm. Knight f1, also very good, just to uh, blockade on e3. Take it nice and slowly, and uh, eventually you'll get there. Well, I think Amit is going to uh, to make that one, yeah. so uh, we can uh, move on a little bit. Uh, just have a quick look how uh, John Spielman with black. Oh, okay, bishop against rook. He'll quite like uh, that. Who's white? Uh, yeah, so Peter Large against uh, John Spielman. John Spielman, ah, is uh, is he mating? Rook d two check. He is going to be mating here. Rook g two now. Oh, rook g two was uh, was strong uh, actually. Uh, with uh, uh, but rook c2, okay. Um, oh, this is uh, this is this has gone a little bit bishop d4 to c3, that's very unpleasant. Um, how are you going to prevent this? I think you've maybe even got to go rook c1, which is definitely <coughs> what you want to do here. Rook c1, um, oh, these are so tough to um, uh, to finish off. Um, bishop b3 going back. Um, oh, rook d1. Oh, well, uh, oh, bishop f2. That's uh, indeed very good, very good, very good. So, John Spielman has won there. All right, that's just a bit of a quick excitement in between. We'll carry on. We're going to have a look at horsey chess. Um, so, um, oh, sorry, we've missed out photo chess. Okay, Maria. So, um yeah, pretty solid. So Maria went for the reverse King's Indian, uh, has played bishop b6, and is going to play b5 here. So ah, that's pretty um, fairly sensible. I would normally, I would have played probably uh, pawn on e5, pawn on h6, and then bishop b6. You know, I like having the pawn five, but uh, but this is pretty uh, pretty decent too. Game still uh, going on. Um, Alice Lampard against Zoe Varney. So Zoe had knight over to g6, looking for f4. White's got the knight on e3. At f5. Certes Huska rise again, indeed. Indeed. I didn't like to mention 
in that one. But uh, yes, no, it's Mike Surtees won um, won this uh, game with uh, with a ninety two and a um, um, and a uh, um, a wing uh, a wing gambit. Very famous game. It's been all over the place. Um, so D four uh, is going to come in at some stage. E four is a bit weak. I mean, why it's a little bit better here? Um, just a slight lead in development, but yeah, it's not uh, not very much. Um, poisonous mushroom, there we are. Poisonous mushroom going for it against um, against Imogen Dyson. Oh, Grand Prix attack! Uh, F5, the usual, I mean, the usual plan. And so um, we're, we're going to see how that goes. Doing quite well then for White. Um, As in, well, you put in the moves you want to get in. Yeah, you've got all the moves you want to get in. Whether they're really that good is is the uh, is, the, point. is the question somehow. But uh, but all the moves that you wanted to play, you've uh, you've played. I mean, the one thing about taking on c six um, is that you don't get this knight d five. You know, which is yeah. often um, uh, which is often um, uh, you know one of the things. So I, I think black should definitely take on e six. Yeah, and then um, you don't recapture. Do you play. just go in with no, no. You you, put, you go uh, you go bishop bishop eight six probably um, is what you're going to do. Oops. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, black can play something, um, you know, something like, uh, bishop h6, maybe knight g4. Um, you can play something solid like f6, maybe just put up the, uh, the barriers like this. Um, it's not so bad for, uh, for black this, you know, you are a, a pawn up after all, you know, so, uh, but, um, but it can be, a, it can be a bit scary to, um, uh, to deal with, it has to be said. Now let's have a look. So black, um, white did go bishop g5 in this game. Did let the bishop get chased away, and uh, black has played um, uh, queen f8, and um, uh, looking to play f5 here. Black gets in f5. Black will be happy. Ooh, I was going to say actually that bishop f5 was kind of uh, um, mandatory, really. You know, just to. Um, uh, to stop f5 and, uh, and get some control of these light squares. Um, queen b1, uh, well, it's positionally quite logical, looking for b4. But I think now you just play f5 with black and you, you're threatening f4. So your positions are normalized now, you know, and I think it's just a, an unclear struggle now. I think if white had played bishop f5 in that position, that would have been, um, you know, very, very good, I think. Ah, some great names here. Thin Rose Leapfrog against the Curious yeah. Parrot. This so the King's, um, Gambit thing. the King's Gambit. So I guess that um, uh, White now is going to play uh, uh, Bishop takes. He's going to get this pawn back eventually. On yeah, and with, with about uh, with about an equal position there, which uh, from a King's Gambit is all that you That's can hope fine. for. That's fine. Indeed, it's um, uh, an equal ending. Is uh, you are you are praising uh, the heaven somehow for achieving that. Oh, this has uh, got quite interesting. Um, so, uh, uh, GAH21. Who's GAH21? Uh, Georgia Headlong. Georgia Headlong against uh, Pure Soul. Uh, so, um, it's got quite interesting. Um, so, um, when Black played Knight E7, White played Bishop A3. So, again, making this slightly tricky for the um, uh, for Black to develop. Um and um, well, you've got the typical compensation here, really. I mean, uh, you've got the the B file. The queen's not stable at all. You'll get some sort of kingside stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, for a wing gambit, it's really uh, sort of uh, yeah. You know, what what can you say? This is uh, you give up. Um, you know, some pawns on the A and B files uh, for a bit of development as well, and that's what you've got. So um, um, yeah, I think white, white can be reasonably yeah. happy with uh, with uh, with this position. Now, this one's uh, interesting. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Black grabbed yet another pawn. Black <laughs> took the pawn A2 as well. So um, three pawns three up. Pawns. Um, now, has White been able to do anything here? White has um, been able to castle, which in some of our lines, White would not have been able to. Indeed, and grab the pawn back. Okay. Um, G6. Hmm. Knight C3. So... Um, yeah, still, um, uh, still very unclear. I guess the queen's going to come back. Oh, actually, a c4 would be a um, a, a decent uh, idea, probably, just to uh, um, swap. Yeah, you, try and swap. Try and swap the uh, queens. Could you put your knight in if you're trying to avoid swapping? Well, you that's going to be a bit tricky. 
you're going to get pinned at the end. Uh, I just take and go rook f8. Uh, you should probably just go queen g7 and uh, and try and wait escape. Wait, 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 wait. Stay, stay, stay. Um, knight d5. Yep. Oh, you're going to go rook, rook f8 rook at the end. Yeah. Yes, rook f8 at the end. Yeah, yeah. But um, uh, rook f8 has been played actually, which is a bit slightly odd. Um, we have got we've got a number of uh, possibilities here. I mean, queen f8 first of all is um, is obvious, of course. Um, yeah. uh, queen queen f6 is actually probably even better. Queen f6, uh, queen takes e3. So if, if bishop f6, we take on e4. Yeah. You go queen takes e3 afterwards. Um, uh, queen f6, queen e3, and then what am I going to do? Um, uh, I think probably rook takes d6 is what I'm going to do. Bishop d6, probably sort of forced. Queen g7 check, get out of the attack, and then f takes e3. I think that's going to be very good. Yeah. Um, the only thing that you might say is, can I go king e8? Um, it's possible. Uh, but I, I'm also going to have stuff like uh, queen takes h8, as you know, for desperados. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I find it hard to believe that this is not going to be Queen e6 queen also looks incredibly promising. I mean, uh, what are you going to do with the queen now? Uh, I'm going to take on c6 after. So um, actually, this should be a losing blunder, rook f8. Queen f6 should be very strong for white. But um, we're going to see. It's quite complicated, uh, quite complicated yeah. tactics there. I white played queen g7, so... Um, uh, well, it's, um, to me, it that's... still looks quite good for white. Uh, no, I don't no? think so. Not really, no. It's. Uh, I mean, uh, I think you know, Queen C4. I think Black should be able to uh, to deal with this somehow. I think the Queen's been pushed offside as well. So, yeah, I think um, I do quite like uh, Black here. Staying calm and focused in winning positions, Oscar. Deep breaths, meditation. Um, I don't know really. Um, I think, to be honest, that being in quite good physical shape helps. Um, that helps uh, uh, soften the um, soften the nerves. Um, uh, playing lots of games, to be honest, also helps. The more games you play, yeah. um, the more you, um, um, the more used you are to, to being in winning positions. But it's it's very difficult. Um, I you're mean, going to have to uh, stop telling yourself you're winning as well, or or like because sometimes you can go if you say I'm win I'm so winning I'm so winning you can go onto the defensive a bit and um, you have to still kind of still play as if you're trying to win rather than protect the win you've already got. Uh, yes, Queen E7 also wins a piece. You're completely right, uh, Peter. I forgot about that. Got a bit carried away with Rook D6, but Queen E7 would just uh, would just win a piece in that game. Yeah, no, it, it's. Um, um, I think the thing that happens with um, uh, when you're in a winning position is that um, yeah, you're often trying to find something. You're trying to make it completely concrete and clear and um, and precise all the time. Whereas in actual fact, um, if you've got a, a great position, there's always a way to improve it, you know. And um, and I think you also get uh, sometimes if if your opponent gets any counterplay whatsoever, then you um, you get worried. Whereas uh, you know before you realised you were winning, you know that would have just been part of the normal play of the normal game. So it's I mean some some sort of element is you know trying to um, uh, trying to keep your balance. Um, but a lot of it is, I think, um, you know, good physical condition helps, and um, playing plenty of games is a very good way of, um, of, uh, um, yeah, you know, of, uh, uh, of um, getting used to the pressure of winning and getting used to converting. And um, obviously, the more that you convert, the more you know, you know, that you can do it. It's, uh, I think, it's especially difficult. This sort of uh, feeling of pressure, I think, you often see that. Um, when 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 people don't um, uh, when people don't play very much, and then the few games that they have, it's so important to win because you know you, you play so few games that, you can, that that can have a knock on effect. You get tense and uh, and all of that. Um, I must say though that you you know just think about your game yesterday. That was uh, quite a treacherous position, um, and it was one I think when even when you won the queen, you needed to be very precise. I think to um, you know to to get uh, um to uh, to hold it off so that was actually a very a very tricky one um i wouldn't uh, you know i wouldn't say that um uh, i wouldn't say that's not a game where i'd say oh that that person has a problem with um um with getting nervous in winning positions i wouldn't say that was uh, it was that sort of game but you know obviously i if you feel that's um you know that's that's a problem in other games as well that's uh, um, yeah, I mean, then my advice applies. But I would say for that one, that was a, a somewhat unlucky, um, uh, an unlucky game yesterday. And uh, and simply, yeah, I mean, um, 
I think it was just a question of of having to uh, to just spot the right idea for um, for White just after winning the Queen. It was deceptive that uh, even after winning the Queen, it was um, uh, yeah, it was tricky. But uh, you know, you played the you know played a big part of the game. You played really really well. So you've got to take the positive from that, and then just uh, you know next time it'll go better. Absolutely sure. Um, let's have a look. Oh, uh, Verde Notte. Uh, just seen that uh, Gawain Jones okay, let's have just, a beat John, just beat John. Just just beat John Spielman in um, um, a rather brutal um, uh, game here. So, uh, um, uh, Gawain's a really strong blitz player. Uh, he really yeah, is strong. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, uh, let's have a look. We've got Harry yeah, Greve. Good as well, right? Because uh, we've played. Um, yeah. In the in there's a, a blitz event each year, um, organised by Dave Norwood, and uh, John Spielman's played in in that and he's been in like final three lots of times he's 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 very strong at Brits. did he win it one i think he hasn't won it but he's 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 got to the final before yeah i think have i beaten him i've beaten him, played twice, him in the final, I? Didn't you? yeah i think i've beaten him twice i think um in the final but um no, i mean um but john's a very strong blitz player but uh, gawain is 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 uh is uh um um obviously I mean, I think uh, if John gets out of the opening alive, then he's uh, an extremely dangerous blitz player. But uh, mm. uh, against uh, certainly against someone like Gawain, he has uh, he has difficulty getting that far. And uh, mm. I think that's what happened in uh, in this game. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, Gawain's very very good. I mean, all all of the English players are good. Mickey is outstanding uh, blitz player. Nigel was also very strong. Um, David Howell is a is a, a you'd expect you know a time trouble addict uh, with uh, in classical he's uh, a very strong uh, blitz player but Gawain's very smooth you know he plays very fast keeps on going when he's in um when he's in the flow then he's uh, he's extremely difficult reminds me of Yasser Serawan Yasser Serawan was another guy like this who um he was really deceptive Yasser Serawan because uh, you know he's uh, he's uh, yeah he's Yasser you know and he's smiling and he's looking yeah, yeah. Uh, happy and all that and uh, you know he's sort of he's playing his moves in a relaxed fashion but he's <laughs> fast he is really really fast and uh, um, I ended up always with him with uh, you know some quite good positions and um, uh, um, uh, some quite good positions and uh, but then I looked at my clock and Yasser you know in his relaxed way he just ended up he was two minutes ahead or something incredible I hadn't, I hadn't realized I hadn't uh, hadn't even felt it yeah no I mean everyone uh, yeah I mean everyone uh, everyone's got huge respect for John I mean uh, you just analyze with him uh, a, a few times and you just uh, you just see that this um, this uh, guy has just got some uh, some amazing tactical vision an amazing way of uh, of thinking about games and uh, thinking about positions that's uh, not really producible. I mean, um, John uh, actually I had a few experiences. I always um, uh, say that um, experiences when, uh, for me, the chessboard got bigger uh, because, uh, you know, you see something and it just, uh, wow, it just widens your possibilities. So I didn't realise that could happen. And uh, one of them was Alpha Zero. I mean, that's uh, uh, that uh, was quite an amazing experience uh, doing that. But another one, a very early one for me, was uh, sitting next to John in the 1996 uh, uh, Olympiads um in uh, in Yerevan and seeing the sort of chess he played and uh seeing it up close you know and also doing a little bit of analysis with John uh, afterwards he's one of the few English players who enjoys a, an analysis session after the after the game uh, English players have never, never been that keen on uh, on that sort of stuff um but uh, uh, that was a, a really uh, an experience where I thought wow that was amazing and uh and uh, just to finish off uh, the row, then uh, another experience that I had um, was um, came at a weird moment. Um, I think somewhere around 2013 or 2014, I come back to playing chess. I played very well at the start, but then started playing badly and got a bit jaded. And um, um, and uh, I saw a game that Luke McShane played against uh, Magnus Carlsen. And uh, for 28 moves, Luke played like an absolute genius. You know, it was just incredible. And uh, afterwards, then he he missed a, a trick, and then um, Magnus ground him down in eighty moves, which was you know it was a rather unfair end. But for, for those moves, and watching that game, I suddenly thought, wow, yeah, you know, oh, I, I ne I've never seen that. Yeah, there's so many stuff to do, you know, so much stuff to do, and uh, it really got away in, in one one you know what a couple of hours of watching in the commentary room. It just um, you know refreshed my chest completely. So um, uh, if everyone have see that one, it's um, uh, Luke McShane against Magnus Carlsen. I think it's the two thousand, either two thousand thirteen or fourteen uh, London Classic. 
and it's not the game that, that uh, Luke beat uh, Magnus in. Um, uh, that was an English opening, but it was uh, it was the, the Berlin defence he lost, and uh, it was an absolutely wonderful game. Uh, actually, I think I even um, I even did a video on it for Chess Twenty Four um, back in the day. So uh, really worth uh, really worth seeing that game if um, if you haven't seen it. Um, okay, so we've had some uh, some games there. Um, uh, let's have a little look. We're going to go back to Ketty, see how Ketty's going. Oh, well, this is an um, uh, interesting position here. It's uh, going to be quite a long, uh, a long little grind. I'm sure Ket Ketavan's thinking, why on earth didn't I play the... Um, uh, the um uh, the king's indian and just uh have my, <laughs> my normal down on f4 by now um so this is going to be a bit of a this is a hey you watched that the other day well done sean mm -hmm. that's what we like to hear it's um uh so i did those videos a very long time ago actually um and uh i did them all in one weekend i must have recorded about uh 40 hours of uh of videos in um in one weekend it was uh um, it's quite a weird experience, you know, you're just alone in the studio and uh, and they give you, you know, you've got the remote control so you know when to stop and when to start and um, and you just sort of, um, yeah, you just keep on going and keep on talking. Mm -hmm. It turns out that I can keep on talking for very long periods of time, which uh, <laughs> you, may, <laughs> you may have realised already. <laughs> so there we are. Um, anyway, back to Ketty. Um, Ketty is probably going to play the night round E8 to D6. Um, and then play for uh, maybe a6 and b5. What is white going to do? Well, white's um, got two possibilities, b4 or um, some sort of kingside pawn advance. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think probably since we've got the open f file to play with, I'd probably you know look for the old uh, doubling up or maybe even king h1, rook g1, and then try and get in some sort of g5. But black is very solid. I, I mean, I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with black's position here. So, um, being the right uh, night round now, isn't she too? Uh, yeah, yeah. Easy. I mean, blockade indeed, Walsman yeah. and uh, Bishop d7. And uh, I mean, black's swapped off the dark square bishop and puts uh, the pawns on dark squares. So, you know, I mean, that's uh, you can't complain about that really. And uh, probably this bishop is a little bit better than this bishop. So, um, uh, certainly against the um, against the check, if you play a check, but only you get this, then um, you definitely got to be happy. Mad alien. Oh, look at this. Nina Pert coming yeah. with rook g3. Um, so, yeah, I suppose the only point at uh, rook g3, and it's going to be met by knight f5. So um, uh, that's not, um, you know, 100% clear um, how so that's going to work out. And stop it with knight h4 or d4. Yeah, I mean, you can do this sort of stuff. Um, you've also got this move bishop d2. Um, and you know you might have a bishop h6 then, and uh, and a queen f4 and a rook g3. So it's a, a good general useful move, um, but you're not going to be able to uh, to finish it off immediately. Um, yeah, I mean black's got to uh, um, black's got to think how how am I going to play this? Um, I mean king h8 is definitely going to be a useful move just to uh, to always have a rook g8. Um, I think you're going to be looking at some stage to go d4 with black. Um, uh, and um uh ah uh, mark if i carry on for long enough you're gonna see it's gonna be uh i'm gonna be saying just anything at the end it's um i might start saying stuff like the moral gambit is a good opening or stuff like that you know so uh it's um yeah. but d4 d4 is um is gonna be is quite a quite a typical move uh, i'd be very tempted to play it very early to be honest and just throw it in and uh and have that done already um um i mean b5 b4 is another idea um maybe some bishop b5 to attack the light squares you've got to try somehow and um um and attack white's position and point out the weaknesses in the light squares you know and also something on the c file that um you know that um uh that's you know the defects to white's uh, position and queen b6 might be interesting as well um looking for a, a future rook c3 and queen b2 you know that's um um it's not bad bad for black this but it's just uh, got to be a little bit um a little bit careful so um interesting i think um yeah nina's done pretty well from the opening there so uh, interesting to see how that one goes on um let's have a look olivia smith against maria 
Eliminova, um, well, I quite like White's position, really, I have to say. Um, um, you know, if White gets in uh, F5, um, light squared bishop is, uh, is is nice one to have because you know if you if you do try to do anything against this um, this structure and you take on their four, then then this bishop gets activated. That's always the nice thing about these kings Indian bishops. They're passive at the start, but the opponent doesn't dare open the center really because um, uh, because then you know the, the bishop would get active. So bishop h6, black's looking to put some pressure on this one. I think maybe uh, h4 actually is sensible, just um, uh, solidify that knight and also give a little square on h3 for the bishop. Um, and I would think that, that white's um, uh, nicely better here. I mean, also because um, having captured on c4, black doesn't really have any counterplay with mm. b5 now. Actually, you know, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think black's uh, in, a, in a little bit of difficulty here now. Okay, so um, Alice Lampard against Horsey Chess. White's taken the plunge, played d5, um, and will probably be aiming to follow up with c4 and c5 uh, later. So um, Black will probably try and get uh, herself organized and, uh, you know, move the knight out of the way and play f5. But we saw Zoe, you know, I mean, she's uh, not afraid of a good kingside attack, so... Uh, Definitely expecting some uh, some action to happen here. Yeah, yeah. I think the king side's going to all open up, and uh, we'll see we'll see some attacks coming in. Indeed, I mean it's not going to be easy because White's got this knight g three uh, move or knight e three to cover f five, so it's not going to be easy to force it. But um, uh, um, I think if I was White, yeah, maybe knight g three I'd, I'd want to play, or maybe a five just to uh, to stop Black from going a five. So that makes c four to c five that much more dangerous. But um, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Did we see Tashika Aurora against Trisha? We've seen that. Um, there Three. she is, Chess Queen 960. There we Eight. are. So, um, so we've been seeing a lot of um, Tashika Aurora games um, in this event, and she also qualified to play in the Open, so she's been playing there. And I'm just half thinking, was she playing in the juniors as well? She can't have been, can she? That would be... I think she might have been. I think she's playing in three. Um, so she's, yeah, she's playing a lot. And doing so, well. Um, yeah, no, doing, doing a good performance in all of them. Um, so, oh, that's quite a nice move. Looking for uh, knight e4 to d6. Um, I mean, e4 was um, was obvious, but um, um, this is quite nice. Um, I think maybe the idea as well is that, uh, I'm wondering actually, could, um, could black actually try knight b6 here? Major open as well. Thank and then, um, and then, if uh, I mean that is absolutely excellent. I think uh, this is a great opportunity to play long games, and uh, you know, for juniors at the moment in their development, I think uh, playing a, a big bunch of games. Uh, oh, good lord! Playing a big bunch <laughs> of games is, 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 is she's strong, right? It is uh, is superb. Uh, it's super, superb training. I think it's really, really good. So, um, uh, now I think knight b six. Might be quite interesting here. Oh, no, it's not going to be that interesting. Uh, the idea was uh, if a5 and I'm going knight a4 and attacking c3. Oh, yeah. But um, but white will play e4 first. Oh, e4, right. And after knight c7, I will go a5. And if you then go knight a4, I will take on c4. And this move knight d2 has proven to be absolutely superb. Yeah. So um, so we'll have to see what, uh, what black will do here. I mean, f5 is possible, um, but... I mean, you are gonna. You, you do feel somewhat weakened when you've done uh, when you've done this. Um, um, it might be worth um, putting the queen to e8, maybe. Um, the point is, of e4, I can come back to e7. But I guess that White's going to play knight e4. It's a little bit annoying. This one, a little bit annoying. I don't know whether we could come out to h5. I want to try and get my pieces active somehow, and uh, I'm not really, uh, not really feeling it. I mean, C5 is also um, um, worthy. Ah, that is definitely worthy of uh, of notice because um, obviously A B A B. We've got this one, so we're not worried about that. Ah, this could be dangerous actually because I'm threatening B4 as well here. Well, C takes B4 and B4. This might turn out to be quite good. Could be that Tashika didn't uh, didn't quite uh, appreciate that one. Mm. I, I don't know. I don't know much about Tashika actually. I didn't. I didn't know her before this uh, this tournament. If people know um, uh, where she plays and, and all that sort of stuff, 
um, uh, she seems to be a very promising junior, so so which is fantastic. Um, if anyone knows more, tell us a bit more about Tashika. Oh, let's have a look. We've got uh, GP Louis. I think that's Ezra Kirk against Verdonote against uh, Gawain Jones. Can have a little bit of blitz distraction there. There seem to be pieces hanging everywhere. Simply. Um, mm -hmm. So why aren't we going F takes G seven? Is the big question here. Um, isn't that rather good? Indeed. King G7, forced. Not the move you'd normally play, but um, the rook can't go to E8. Queen H4. Okay, so we're going to go H3 now. Uh, and now, what is Gawain going to do? I think he's going to go Knight F2, to be honest. I think mm. uh, I think that's kind of, kind of the one. Um, okay, rook F2, queen F2. Now, have I overestimated this? Maybe I have actually. I'm just thinking. I thought this would be quite. Uh, you get some sort of play somewhere, but um, actually, all these uh, all these pawns are, are kind of restricting your dark squared bishop. Um, could we just go? Yeah, f5 possible. I was wondering whether even whether queen h5 was possible, to be honest, um, because we stopped the bishop getting to um, to f5 then. Um, queen h5, okay. So we could threatening a little bishop h6 check there. Oh, yes. Um, what is Gawain going to do? I mean, Bishop G6 is possible here. Because mm -hmm. Bishop H6, we just uh, move away and the Queen's on prees. Um, um, I think that would be the most uh, the most obvious. Yeah. Um, so Bishop H6 okay. check, I guess, that's the, um, the big obvious move to play. And then we'll probably play to G8. H8, okay, that's uh, possible to us. Tactical player. Interesting. Okay. Ah, very good. That'll be interesting. So, where are we going to put this queen? Um, G5, maybe? G5, black gets to play F6 for free. Um, G4, I'm unfortunately not uh, contacting that square, but maybe I should go queen G4. I mean, I'm threatening rook F1 after, and then I'll just try and get back onto the dark squares after. Um, I guess that one. I mean, black could play um, a move like f5. Turns this one into a, a bit of a, a into a bit of a pawn. Um, um, I mean, I could also just play c6 just to get my rook over to e8. Um, uh, oh, rook e8, Gawain, um, Gawain no, going for it. Oh, no, he's no, not really. <laughs> Uh, he's ta <laughs> taken it. Oh, I was I was thinking I'd throw in rook f1 first, to be honest, um, because now this rook is not is not very active. Yeah. King h2. That's the the move of a an experienced blitzer. Just so get out of a. We can't um, go rook e2. We'll come in that way because queen c8 will be one two three four five six six six. Okay. So um, Gawain uh, teeing up for uh, something with uh, with there. Uh, it's really annoying not having uh, not having been able to get the rook over there. Okay, so uh, White is playing now for um, the ending here. I mean, Gawain will take on c2. Um, yeah. A practical decision, I guess. I, I don't know whether there was anything better than that, but uh, oh, rookie eight actually. Uh, see, those are good moves from uh, Gawain. Our rook b1. I think White's uh, um, uh, a little bit. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think Gawain will probably take on C2 now, bless you. Yeah. Um, rook D2, and then Rook D2, I guess. And then probably, well, maybe we put the bishop on E4. Could put it on G6 as well. Um, just leave the, the E file open for the rook. Now I think Gawain will bring the rook to E1. Uh, there we are. I mean, not easy, but... Um, uh, yeah, I mean, um, uh, this is uh, this is this is quite a good one. Just to um, now, I think White really should take that. I mean, at least you get a past H pawn. I think if you go something like G five, then um, uh, your bishop's getting a bit restricted. Rook G two, sneaky. Uh, but I would uh, I would give good money that Gawain is not going to uh, to fall for that one. Uh, maybe Rook D one. Uh, I played Rook F one. Okay, Rook F two. Maybe rook d1 now is quite a good one. Yeah, because if you take those rooks off, that's going to be a draw. Ooh, pretty rook much. d3, rook d3. Gawain was onto that one like a flash. Mm -hmm. um, OK, 
King F4. Ooh, King F4. Good Lord. Um, so I think we're going to take on C3 there. Um, it's, um, I think uh, King E4, he's going for some, well, I think if you go King D5, I've got Bishop F3. So it's not really, uh, um, you've got a bit of Bishop F6. I mean, there's always uh, there's always tricks, but, uh, oh, that's quite a interesting move. King F8, getting out of these uh, tricks here, Bishop F6. Um, King E8. That's... Yeah. Yeah, it brings the king away from the from the age pool, and that's why it uh, surprises me a little bit. But it might well be a, a, a good way of uh, of doing things. Rook g three. Notice it's a good way just. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's just um, he's just uh, stopping uh, uh, rook f four. Yeah. Uh, now, what if he took the rooks off? Now it's two. Now it's two pawns, but still, it's very drawish with those opposite bishops. Yeah, I think um, I think you you, you always feel your, your chances of. Um, uh, of um, making something with the rooks on the board is probably higher than uh, than without. What about if you took the third pawn? Because you could do that, uh, but still the pawn's too far. So h5, uh, this is going to be quite easy for black, I think, now, because uh, um, you can, um, the very worst case scenario is that um, um, you have to give up your bishop for the pawn, but you've got yeah. <laughs> you've got loads of them now. now you've got five. So, um, uh, yeah. Oh, five. and the bishop's gone oh, as well. And the bishop. Very smooth, yeah. very smooth, uh, Gawain. Yeah, very well played. Good plan. I mean, Gawain's played a lot of blitz. I mean, he's played the the banter blitz, uh, lots of things. Oh, yeah, he's the, he's the European blitz. He's the European the online online. Did he just win that? Well. He's, he's, he, he, he just that, had yeah. an amazing win. Was it? Yeah. Blitz for record. Blitz. Uh, blitz. 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 Yeah. So uh, and he beat uh, Alexei Shirov in the final. So um, yeah. So I mean, that's uh, that's uh, pretty good. OK, let's have a little look uh, around at the top then. So, um, well, uh, Lara is um, getting ready to uh, to tee up and uh, Ketavan is now going to play B5, probably. Oh, maybe she'll wait one move. I mean, G5 is is a sort of a threat now because uh, because of this. So maybe Ketavan will just play Queen E7 first, something like this, mm -hmm. and then play B5 later. How are they doing on the clock, Ketis? Oh, no, just quite equal on the clock. Quite equal there for, uh, for now. Um, Mad Alien and Nina uh, has played a five. Okay, and uh, uh, White didn't play um, uh, uh, D black didn't play d4, so um, White's played uh, bishop d4 there, um, and queen f4, and uh, teeing up for a little rook g3 there, I think. Um, but yeah, it looks like black's still um, still doing okay there, so probably uh, throw in a rook c2, I guess. And um, uh, but I mean, I, I would say that White should probably, you know, think of casting artificially. Um, just go King F1, G1, have H2 free to be able to run away all the time, and then start thinking about some sort of uh, king side play. I mean, even G4, G5 at some stage is going to be dangerous. It's going to be a fun one. This one. It's going to be a good. Uh, yeah. Only sure off. Pa. Exactly. If she already starts with like Rook G3 now, ah, uh, King King defends like that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean this is um, uh, this is fine for now. I, I would play, I would play king f one. I think probably in this position yeah. and just uh, get my get king safe. And then, um, and, and then, then maybe you bring the other rook in as well if you do. Yeah, that. you could, you could, you could, because it's quite hard for um, for black to make um, inroads uh, somehow. It's not uh, completely obvious, so um, quite unclear uh, this position. Photo chess. So why did play h four and did play f five? Yeah, so. yes. That's pretty amazing. With hasn't Gawain just got a new baby as well? And <laughs> and, uh, and, and play blitz with a new baby and a new dog as well. I think so. Mm -hmm. um, Is that right? Uh, a fairly new dog, at least. So, yes, uh, a fairly new baby. <laughs> a fairly new baby as well. So um, it's, it's a uh, lockdown baby, isn't it? It's, a, it's this year, twenty twenty baby. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's a twenty twenty yeah. baby. So. Um, uh yeah so 98 so um yeah i mean white's white's just doing basically quite well i think rook b1 now would be um is a good idea just attack b7 um maybe have a rook b6 later and um um yeah and, and just keep on uh, keep on going really um so that's a quite a nice position for white there let's have a look so horsey chess has played g5 and white's played knight h2 um, and it's also looking to push the sea pawn up. It's going to be quite a nice, uh, a nice battle here. A little bit difficult for Black to get the attack going now that you've played uh, g5. But um, yeah, knight f4 is a good start. I mean, White could play knight g4, 
um and then fretting the fork and um and if you go king g7 then i go knight e3 and then come around to f5 so yeah um a little bit tricky and then you play c5 c6 i think white's got a clear advantage in this position but uh anything can happen poisonous mushroom well blacks actually survived quite well here really um yeah. Born h5 in this game um, it's imogen dyson and against and white is julie o indeed and um well blacks uh, survived quite well here um uh, uh and rook b8 here actually i think would be a quite a good move you know attacking b2 um bishop uh attacking this way as well and um yeah i think uh, i think white's just uh, mm. a very good position here in principle some stage you might want to take on g5 but you don't need to you shouldn't rush with it i think you should probably uh try and uh, okay yeah i mean it's possible too but uh it just means that white's gonna get uh, some attacks with g4 which you're gonna have to uh, uh to look at you know and uh um, if you don't have to then uh maybe after knight g5 here you should go queen e7 just to give you um a bishop f6 or bishop h6 uh, idea that would probably be quite uh, quite good uh raylin um so white's managed to um get this um this f4 move in um which is pretty not not bad um got this e3 blockading square um only problem is you don't have a dark squared bishop so um yeah these blockades are, are not as solid as they normally would be um and i think um yeah i mean ray lynn has got the possibility to um uh, to play b5 pretty soon um and that would be a very good thing to uh to do um you could argue that white should probably play a4 and uh, try and stop that but that would give uh, you know white black a, a decent square on b4 for the night so in general in terms of this type of structure i mean sometimes these are a little bit dodgy with a um, a bishop on d7 that can't really move very well because of these but i think because um you've got a dark square bishop and white doesn't um i don't think white's got any play oops sorry white doesn't really have any play on the queen side if anyone's going to get play it's going to be black um and you've also got this move h5 h4 to you know to chase these away mm -hmm. i think black's doing um pretty well really and last time we saw Raylin play, she had just been off a, uh, been on a night shift um, and had basically no sleep. Uh, so, and this time she said she was going to try and get a bit more sleep. Um, she was in the commentary last night, wasn't she? Indeed, that's right. Um, so we've got uh, May Catterby here against um, uh, Rukaya Rida. So that's um, wonderful names. Thin Rose Leapfrog against the Curious Parrot. And uh, this is just uh, just equal, basically. I mean, you expect white to play c3 here, uh, protect d4, and um, yeah, I mean, just uh, an equal position there. This is that's the king's gambit game. So it's just that turned into a, that's right, isn't it? It's just turned into yeah. an equal end game. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, even though I'm sure white was playing for trying to get a um, you know with choice of opening, trying to get a an early middle game attack. Uh, yeah, you do what you do exactly. often early in one game. So um, yeah, this has gone. Yeah, um, uh, it's gone a little bit strange for uh, for White. So um, I, I think you know really that the idea normally would have been to try and make a king side attack and get this one moving forward. And White's put the um, the rooks on the queen side there, where they're well actually just staring against a black knight there. So that hasn't gone um, uh, particularly well, I think. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I think. White still though has a, a possibility of going knight d3 and maybe playing f4, but um, I, I mean, king up to sorry? h3, king up to eight, wait, king up to h3, and then you can kind of redeploy mm. your rooks whichever side of the board you like. Mm. You yeah, I don't do know. I, mean, I think that's going, going, going to go g6 pretty quickly and um, and open up the uh, the g file. So that mm. would be a little bit um, would be a little bit worrying somehow. So um, just leave the um, king where it is. Do you think? We'll try and I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure really. I'm not quite sure what um, uh, what White should do here. Um, I, I'm I'm sort of expecting knight d3 f4 and then um, try and do something. That I'm a bit worried if g6 uh, is played, it could be quite uh, awkward. It could just be uh, yeah. Um, you end haven't up got time just, uh, to get a rook around and defend it with a rook. No, I mean these rooks. These rooks are just a bit wrong on this. Uh, they should be yeah. well, certainly one rook should be over here. You know, sort of uh, uh, helping uh, white expand on the king side there. Because I mean, you give away a, you give away a pawn on the on the queen side, but it's not a Benko gambit. You know, it's not that mm. uh, uh, that, the, that your um, uh, 
um it's not that you um that you're trying to get um uh, here it's that you um you know you open up this diagonal um uh and and you've got this pawn on e5 and uh, and then you can advance on the king's side it's you know it's it's not a benko gambit i mean i think that's the point yeah so um so, uh, so i i'll yeah. play knight d3 to try and get an f4 but um and then meet uh, that, six with f4 you could i suppose but then the yeah, queen might be behind the pawns and then you're yeah I mean, it's, it's not a, it, it, it's not a good position for white. I mean, I mean that's the basic. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm just saying, you know, given you're in the position, it's going to be something, right? So f4, king g2, and then if it takes, if she takes on h5, you could go rook h1 if the queen was. Yeah, but I got I got queen takes g4 then. So, um, for example, uh, um, yeah, I'd be three g6, f4, queen h4, king g2, g takes h5. Rook yeah. h1, queen g4. So uh, that's not going to be. Uh, and you'd be in an end game of pawn down, which isn't what you want. Uh, two pawn, three pawns down. Three so, pawns uh, down. That's definitely not what you want. Indeed. So, so maybe uh, there's not much to be done on that one. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, it, you know, it, it depends on um, on um, on on how white uh, on how white does it from there. But uh, it's a difficult position. That's all I mean to, yeah. uh, to say that. Uh, and I think it comes because uh, I said the rooks are. Um, yeah, been deployed yeah. on, the, uh, on the rock side there. Uh, let's have a look. We've got Verdonotti playing Matthew Wadsworth. So um, uh, Gawain Jones taking on Matthew Wadsworth in the um, in the blitz. Excellent. And Gawain has a bishop pair. Indeed. Um, so yeah, there should be a slight slight edge <laughs> tonight. Um, uh, this knight on b six is not uh, great. Um, and um, a knight on oh, that's an interesting move from Gawain. I hadn't thought of that one at all. Um, looking to play if bishop g five, he's going to um, um, he's going to take back on g five with the pawn, and this knight mm. on h five is uh, is out of play. But rook d eight is uh, is a good um, a good ooh, response. That's clever, isn't it? Because you can't ever go back. The pawn on g seven is there forever. So. Uh. Yeah, yeah. You, you won't um, you won't easily uh, get oh. out of that one. So um, so this this is going to be a, a motif in the coming uh, in the coming game. It's a frustrating one for Black because you'd love to take off and then bring a rook into there, but um, you're um, yeah, uh, you're not being kind to. Oh, that's quite that could be quite a good move. This e4, mm -hmm. not sort of obvious because of uh, the the um, uh, it opens up d4, but um, uh, you are actually going to be able to um, to loosen up this um, uh, this structure. Yeah. And um, and this one's a bit weak, and with the bishops, you know, the bishop it's might be very root. wise of um, Wadsey to bring his knight back out of there and and just I forget so. about the bishops. Now I'm wondering. I, I, I'd be tempted just to play bishop b2. He's done it. Um, maybe rook rook somewhere. I'm not quite sure where. Uh, d4 or d7, um, and then afterwards um, he's, he's going to take off and he's going to go bishop f1. And then come round to h3. You know, I think this is going to be. Uh, um, I'm I'm fairly sure this is going to something like this is going to happen. Um, and oh, rook takes c3. Wow. Oh, yes. Good <laughs> lord. That was quite. Uh, that was a shocking one, but maybe not that amazing. Because um, now it's you, still you got can't, it's, yeah. You can't take on e4, uh, so you're going to take with the e f. But this is not. It doubled, it's not, it's not doubled. Got lots of ones. Yeah, bishop f1. In principle, this is quite nice, but um, it's maybe, I think it was probably not a bad choice from black. Uh, get some activity in there, you know, and uh, yeah. uh, change the course of the game. Um, and, you know, you've, you've got to uh, um, yeah. you get your and knight. Yeah, you uh, try and take those pawns, you might end up having to give up a bishop for a knight while you do it. Like, say, that pawn on e4, if you're going to, what bring your bishop round and take that off yeah i mean i think if you if you're going to go after a pawn you'll probably go after g6 you could go bishop h3 e6 f7 taking that way oh, and then yeah. try and come back that's that's nicer if you can do that so um uh so here the uh um he's played b4 to stop knight c5 um it does mean though that uh that c4 is a little bit weak there uh he's just gone after e4 here um, huh. is he going to take Four. I'm, I'm ooh, not sure about that one, really. Well, that was my uh, suggestion. I, uh, yeah, now I prefer your suggestion. Now I see it. <laughs> well, I, I, I would, I, I would rather keep my bishops. You know, just uh, but yes. uh, I would have, I would have taken that one off actually because uh, uh, now it doesn't I matter. Do I think, 
Yeah, uh, you've got to. No, he, well, he's, he's come. He's done it the other way around. He's, uh, done it, he's, he's done taken. It exactly people. Right. I, I, I really, I really would have taken that one because uh, yeah. uh, two bishops. You could be, you could be a, a, a few pawns down, and you still got counterplay. You know, so. Um, yeah. Well, uh, he has kept his bishops, but he's not pawns up. Indeed. Um, now, okay, so what's he going to E7? So he's going to, that's a tricky one, um, hoping for a, a here, here or something. But I think what's he's just going to go rook A4. Yeah. I was playing for tricks uh, from Gawain there, I think. Um, Why not? Everyone's entitled to play for tricks from time to time. Everyone is entitled, but I, I'm not sure that's helped his position. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, F4. Yeah, so he's trying to open it up for the bishops. So that's a, a good idea. If the king goes back to E7 now, then bishop G6 happens. Ooh, right. EF. Right. Now there must be. Now there really must be tricks. Okay, so um, uh, rook D1, Gawain uh, setting up a little bishop D6. He's quite. Uh, how much time has. What's he's only got 10 seconds? Ooh, that's. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, that's lost. That's lost. That's lost. No, bishop D6, followed by C5. That was the yeah. whole point. Yeah, yeah, Gawain, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gawain. He's got it again now. He's, oh, he's got it. And now he puts the knight as well. Yeah, this yeah, is the yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, there we go. As well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was uh, with two bishops. Uh, you know, uh, I think what Black just on principle, you, you get rid of the two of the bishop pair because uh, there's too many checks, uh, certainly in a um, uh, in a uh, in a blitz finish there. So um, interesting. Have we got a, another one going? Oh, we've got the we've got the final of. Uh, um, uh, oh, wait a minute, we've got to Harry Greave against John Spielman. Um, oh, interesting, okay. Quite, quite a good one. We'll see how John finishes this off. So he's, he's got very... exchange for two pawns. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, in principle, uh, oh, ha Harry's uh, uh, keeping the F-pawn. I was wondering about swapping it off, but uh, Harry's decided to, he's going to make things... Uh, oh, those are good blitz players, and Harry's a superb blitz player. He, um, he won the... Um, um, uh, the marathon, the ECF 24-hour marathon for oh, wow. um, just the head of Danny Gormali. Can you believe it? After playing 24 hours, uh, it went to the final game, and uh, wow. and he just tipped Danny Gormali. But um, uh, he is a, a very good uh, blitz player, and yeah. um, uh, and actually, I think that John um, John had a big time advantage. But I don't think. Oh yeah, John is playing. John is playing for the win. My goodness, he is. Um, uh, Oh, setting up a little rook f8 c4 there, but um, uh, king c4 check. Ah, John's John's tricky. John's tricky. King d uh, king d1's a good one actually. Uh, oh, c3 threatening. Actually, was it a good one? C3 threatening c2. Rook d3 cunning. C2 uh, king c1 and he stopped bishop a3. Um, bishop f8. I'm sure John's going to play bishop f8. No. Oh, um, I would have gone bishop f8 if I was him, but. Um, mm. Uh, could still happen. Oh, rook c3. Oh, uh, is he going to give a rook f3 check now? King b2 and an f8. Okay, a rook f5. Tricky. Oh, yes. Well done, John. John Spielman gets oh, him. Oh, oh, one's that running the rook. Indeed. The old man is still <laughs> very much, uh, very much. I mean, he is. He is, um, he is, um, he's super, he's super, uh, um, I said, once he gets part of the opening, uh, then he's very, very dangerous in blitz. Well, I was playing, we were playing, uh, there was this thing after the London Chess Classic where you play against all the grandmasters simultaneously, and John was the grandmaster on our table this particular year, and um, and 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 all the way through the game, he was like, Well, I'm not going to tell you what to play, you can kind of play your own moves, uh. Not my responsibility. You, you just play what you think, and so we'd discuss amongst the table and we'd play a move. And he'd, he'd just say if there was a major problem with it. Anyway, then we, we got we, we got to position. We were a bit worse. We're maybe pawn down in an end game. Suddenly, John springs into life, and he every single move has to be absolutely precise. He was right in his element on exactly which it was rook and pawn end game. And uh, I think we won the game in the end. It was uh, it was very nice. Yeah, great player, John. So uh, very impressive, very impressive that one. So um, and uh, yeah, Gwen Jones also looking very impressive. He's already beaten John. No, he's uh, not old. You're absolutely right, Mark. He's not old at all. Relatively speaking, compared to Harry Greaves, then definitely, I think. How old's Harry? Harry's about seventeen, eighteen, I think, isn't he? Uh, oh, okay. um, it's uh, so. Ketty has played B five. Ketty is uh, is. Um, I would think. I would say. In general, Ketty is reeling this one in slowly. 
Um, got good counterplay. The queen is uh, a little bit offside on um, on a three, kind of, but um, uh, it, it can't be it can't be captured, and uh, and it's actually going to be quite unpleasant, I think. So um, looks like Ketty is uh, is going to make it. I wonder whether whether she enjoyed her opening though. Uh, I think. Uh, oh, Nina is going for it. Nina is going to get in G5 here. So, um, oh, knight F3. Well, this uh, is going to get really sharp now. This is going to get really sharp. She hasn't used her king across. She's just kind of left that. So she's keeping her options open there. Yeah, this is interesting. Uh, this is going to get really sharp now because um, uh, um, so black can actually take on D3 here. Um, oh. Are we going to go G5? We might do. And cover the question is, yeah, we have to cover an attack on that bishop. Well, I mean, I suppose you're threatening takes, takes, and uh, bishop e3. That's kind of the um, uh, the idea. Um, but I think maybe you could, um, if we could just get rid of that um, knight. I mean, maybe I could play knight takes d4 here. G takes h6. No, uh, well, that won't work. So take on um, d4 now. Take on d4, and I'll probably play something like a rook c4. Can we take on d3? Oh, we can take on d3. My goodness. Okay, we'll go bishop e4 then. Yeah. Um, and if you go gh, I mean, I might be able to take here. But I was actually thinking more about playing g6 and, um, um, and just, you know, leaving this block somehow. If the knight comes here, I can take it. And then... Yeah, if you don't have mate, then this king is um, is going to be awkward. So I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that this attack is really uh, um, is really going to work for um, for Nina. I think it is important. I mean, if you go bishop here, takes and takes, for example, uh, because um, g6, I've got a knight g5. Then um, uh, after gh, then I've got um, bishop e3, which is uh, mm. suddenly decisive. So. I think black needs to be quite precise here, but I yeah. think I think in and general course, the, black... the black player here is Dagny, isn't it? So she's a very very Indeed. strong player. Indeed, down to two minutes. So obviously a little bit worried there, um, yeah. but um, uh, yeah, I think um, it, it's time to be uh, to be brave here with Bishop takes d three, and I don't actually see how um, uh, the white. I still think white. Can do it, but okay, so yeah, g five I quite like, and then. Uh, so then black plays bishop b4. Um, no, knight takes d4. Knight takes d4 first. Um, knight takes. Knight takes and then uh, uh, bishop b4, I thought, probably. Yeah. And we still I can't mean, get that other thing. That's a slight problem. No, I mean... Can try a, a king d2 or, or a king. I think we've got queen b6 as well. Uh, king to e2. I can go something like rook c4. The problem is always a, a gh. Uh, I'm, I'm playing g6, you see. So I'm sort of wondering how how I'm going to break through on that um, yeah. on that king side. That's my um, kind of my big worry. I don't see a breakthrough there really. Yeah. Um, whereas this this you know this is now quite a quite unstable so um, right. wait, oh, wait, wait. g5 g5 has been played by uh by mad alien so uh um that's something completely different that's interesting i'm not oh, sure yeah. about that one we because do. um oh suddenly we've got we're getting some open lines here takes takes yeah. and queen e3 so we're yeah. covering d3 and we're threatening rook h3 yeah, this is looking quite but i guess <laughs> Um, but I guess, yeah. Now the problem, you, what you want to play, or maybe you can still do it actually, is to take. Yeah, because that one hits e6 now. It might take uh, six and go queen h4 here. And we can take the bishop. Well, yeah, but if you take the bishop, I go queen h1 check. So yeah. um, king e2 and queen takes, and that is probably. That is a rook. That is very strong. So I'm threatening rook c2 as well. So uh, with right. mate, actually. So. so we can't take the bishop yet. But all right. So what if we move the king? Uh, I've got to think where to go. Um, d2 covers the c file, but it weakens this one. 
e2 will, will allow a queen g4 check i think e2 is probably safer um it's not clear whether i'm threatening any of these things because rook c2 is is quite a threat yeah. in that case um but has black has black got a way to to get a bit to get in a bit more maybe we should just play a, a rook f7 that might be sensible um so um just get out of a of a knight e6 um and we've got a possibility of uh, of doubling with flexible like that right say uh, we do rook g1 now and then we want to go rook h3 after that yeah that's the possibility um so we can go we've got a couple of ideas here we could go rook f8 yeah that's possible um we could also i don't know whether whether i mean rook there is probably not good i think rook c7 you can just well maybe you could even take actually and then escape like that so rook a g1 rook cf8 right. not clear so i, mean, I, 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 I could take, take yeah. five, or i could go rook 1 g2 and threaten yeah, rook yeah. h3 here yeah. this is all right no but this is a but yeah but g5 was not such a such a good move somehow so uh yeah. Um, I mean, that's. Uh, um, I think that uh, Bishop takes d3 was uh, was stronger. Um, so. Um, Interesting. Yeah, I mean, Rook h3 is coming in now. I mean, I could I could play a move like King g7. That might be might be interesting. The thing about it is that. Um, now, actually, this queen is uh, is now on its perfect square, you know, defending everything. So I could just play a move like bishop c5. You know, I'm playing king g7 to meet rook h3 with rook h8, but I go bishop c5. I can even think about going d4, you know, just really cementing this uh, this bishop on there. So I think that um, if... Uh, um, uh, Resignation. Who resigned? With, with, with Who, resigned? Who resigned? Who resigned? Huh? Where are we? Which game? <laughs> Is it, did uh, did um uh? I'm just trying to find it. Uh, I've lost the game. The game's disappeared from from my. Uh... Oh, maybe she has resigned. I, I didn't have <laughs> Madalia anymore. But uh... yes, I couldn't get elite player. I just looked. Um, Waldsman, did you see what actually happened? Can you maybe search for um um for Madalia too? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, let's search. But yes, okay. Good so Lord. if we search Elite Player 3, Elite Player uh, with, with those things, I, I always wonder actually whether did somebody mean, mean to offer a draw and press the resign button uh, instead? But, um, well, it's, it's, it's shown she's won, and okay. the moves were oh, uh, she took on pass on and then black resigned. Okay. She didn't run out. No, she didn't run out of time. Yeah, but that's. Uh, I mean, that's not. There's, there's that's nothing. Your reaction to resign. There's nothing. Uh, nothing winning there. I mean, I think what what is better now after Queen E three. I mean, I definitely think that's true. But um, uh, but still. Oh, that's a well. That's a strange one. Well, we'll we might find out a bit later what uh, yeah. what happened. In, uh, congratulations, in the... she, she did build yeah, up a yeah. good position against very a very well, strong player and has got the win there. So, uh, fantastic result for Nina there. And she's been playing fantastically, um, kind of throughout this tournament. And I know she had good performances before the tournament as well. So, uh, so well done to her. No, excellent, uh, excellent, uh, excellent stuff. Um, come on, Shivant, how. You can definitely watch both. I mean, come on! It's uh, this, this, uh, this, this. Um, you know, elite chess. It's not all it's made out to be. There's uh, plenty of stuff here that you get that you don't get there at all. So um, you definitely got to watch both to uh, to have the full um, to have the full experience. I think so. Yeah, I think Mark that might well have uh, happened. Oh uh, yeah, maybe the draw offer was intended. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. It's possible, yes. and uh, and then instead, um, oh, uh, press the, the flag. Button. Okay. On the flag. Yeah, yeah. I, I've done, I have done that. Uh, I've done that on uh, uh, before, actually. So it, it's possible. Yeah, we'll that's unfortunate. Have to see what happens there. But um, but anyway, let's. Uh, oh, we've got a we've got a blitz game going. Uh, yeah. Peter Large, 
Uh, oh, again, uh, uh, of Edmonton, but this is looking uh, completely winning for um, uh, for Gawain here. Just the exchange up. Um, I'll skip along to a different one. Wadsey against Amit Garnasi. Actually, virtually repeating <laughs> repeating yeah. the opening that uh, that they had in the um, in the uh, 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 in the open. Actually, so um, so uh, this one, well. Bit unclear really. Black's going to have a past a pawn, but White takes this pawn on e7, so Black's got some weak pawns. So um, this knight's a bit offside, though. So um, not quite clear what's going to happen there. Um, uh, these are difficult positions to to judge and to play well, um, especially with little time. Um, I mean, the obvious thing to do would be to um, Play bishop b3, I think, um, to try and get a5 to a4 as quickly as possible. Um, so I protect d5, um, uh, and then um, because this, this bishop is hanging, I can get in a5 uh, quickly, a5 to a4, and then um, uh, and then we'll see what happens with that pawn. But uh, okay, knight d7. Oh, yes, uh, this pawn on e2, but this pawn on d5 is hanging. So I'm, I'm oh. Oh, this pawn on d4 is hanging. Oh, lots of things are hanging. Um, <laughs> that's um, oh, that's actually quite going to be quite dangerous then, because I think uh, Black's going to take on e2, maybe. I oh, know, but then we'll throw in a, a little check on c8, which will be annoying. So he's taken on d4 first, but here we can play a little e3 with a bit of luck. Um, no, he's taken on d5. Okay, so rook takes e2 now. Played f2. Um, I'm a little bit nervous. A little bit nervous now for. Um, oh, uh, we have a, a rook c4, don't we? Oh, for king bishops. Rook c4 was, was kind of possible. I'm, I'm not sure. You know, it's just a. Uh, but knight f3, bishop b6, rook c8, king g7. Um, we're still faced with this one now. I think this is very, very tricky for uh, Matthew Wadsworth now. Um, I don't really know what you're going to do here. Um, can you find some sort of trick? We need a trick. I can't see a trick. Um, mm -hmm. No, it's a difficult one. It's a very difficult one here. I don't. Uh, I don't see how you're going to stop Black just having uh, two extra pawns in this position. This knight uh, bishop combination is uh, is gorgeous. Actually, that's a, a sensible move. Probably just um, let's just try and uh, and get rid of that. Um, I mean, bishop takes f2, followed by rook a2 is um, is quite um, uh, sensible. Rook e6 is uh, very sneaky. Um, so black looking very tricky. But yeah, this knight g5, I think, I wonder whether uh, Amit missed that. Because now yeah. we're going knight e4 here, um, which is uh, um, rather decreased. Uh, uh, yeah, so rookie two, but yeah, yeah, you somehow uh, you've, you've 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 wasted a few moves. And White can play knight h three now to cover. Um, well, there we are, Matthew, uh, going okay. for that. Um, I guess maybe a, a bishop c seven uh, would be um, would be decent. I mean, should this be a draw, I think? sorry, should this be a draw or a no? Win? No, this should, be, this, this should be a win. Uh, this should be a win for Black, but uh, um, obviously always tricky. Um, uh, so, well, Matthew didn't swap off the bishops. These are now rather bad. Mm. Uh, that's a good move. Taking away g5 and threatening g5. That's a, that's a good one. This knight on h3 is... Uh, oh, rook a3. Interesting. Um, ah, he wants to come back to a2. Ah, very good. Anticipation. Knight goes back to h3, now g5. Ah, me doing this really, really well. Mm. a4. Pull moves up. Bishop c5 will probably be next, I think. Up ah, bishop d4. Fair enough as well. King g3, knight f6. Ah, um, yeah. Yeah, black uh, uh, by timeout. But uh, yeah, uh, very good game. Very good game from um, from uh, Amit there. Um, just, uh, yeah, kind of relentless, actually. It's very good technique in um, in these positions. Um, let's look at Ketty. Ooh, this has got very sharp. Look Ooh, at that. These pawns coming in. <laughs> Oh, indeed! What a brilliant, uh, uh, a brilliant idea here. After rook fb8, you're sort yeah. of thinking you know, Black's just going to uh, this is just going to be a bit of a routine um, um, uh, position where Black just you know just slowly advances. White whipped out the brilliant b4. Oh, b4. 
Always a good Ace move. Ace C5 and Knight F7. So both sides, both sides got to pass pawns. My so goodness. D pawns against C and well, D pawns. Who, who is better and why, actually? I'm not sure. I think after Knight B4, then... Um, uh, I mean, Rook A4, we go Rook B1. Not clear that um, the black's better anymore. Um, wow. What a turnaround. This could be, I mean, I think knight b4 is quite strong here because rook there, yeah. you go rook here, and rook a8, um, threatening rook uh, b4, we go yeah. rook a2. Uh, but then I'm threatening c6 and bishop b5. Yeah. Um, even, you know, simply bishop d3 I mean, to c2. Bishop in somehow, doesn't, doesn't she? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think, I think it's if, you, if you go to something like knight g5 here, um, then we can start doing a little c6 and d6, you know, and, and these are very yeah, dangerous. They're very far advanced, aren't they, those points? You know, I, I don't know. I, this has gone, a, a, this has gone a complete mess. You know, this could be, this could be any of, uh, of three results, basically. Uh, so, uh, well fought, well fought, Lara G. Um, oh, what has happened here? Uh, but Lara G went c6, bishop e8. Ah. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm less keen on that Ooh, one because now, blockade, yes. now, we've got, now we've got the blockade here. Yeah, I know, but I think this, this is. Um, oh no, no, I think I think this is wrong. I think this is. Uh, um, yeah, Ketty straight away moving knight to d6, attacking yeah. e4 here. So um, I think uh, I think knight b4. It was really it was anybody's game there. I think, but um, <laughs> now I think Ketty is gonna is gonna is gonna win this one. I think. Um, uh, you know, rook's going to come to a4. Um, and, you know, we, we're going to bring the king to c7, hold it all, and then uh, line up on the e4 pawn. I mean, I think long term this should be uh, very good here. Oh, that was uh, that was an amazing moment. Um, chess queen, Aurora Toshiko. Look at the black pieces black, coming in here. The black pieces, blacks are rook up, and the black pieces are zooming all over the white position. So yeah. it's looking very, very good for Trisha. Very good for Trisha yeah. there. Well, she's a very strong player. She looks like she'll convert that one. So um, Alice L against Zoe. Well, White did get the uh, the, the knight onto f5, but Zoe's uh, going to aim to um, uh, get the rook over to uh, to the h file. I think um, I kind of, if I was... Um, uh, um, you couldn't take on... Oh, you, you, yeah, double rooks and take on g3, I suppose, at that point. Yeah, I, mean, I think if I, was, um, if I was white, I'd be looking at queen g4 here. Um, I'm threatening yeah. knight h4 check with a discovered uh, attack on there. Okay, knight f6. Uh, then I go knight h4 check. My queen's defended. Um, well, <laughs> ah. for how long is the question? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Seven, okay. I've got queen g5 and... And um, uh, rook h4 check, rook h4. I've okay, got rook f6 check, yeah. Okay, fair rook enough. F6 check followed by, followed by queen d7. So that could be very, very dangerous here. Um, now I think the problem is, what survive? I mean, you can play f6, which is horrifically risky. Uh, knight h4, but you can come to there. Um, Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Why not just do it? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I mean, I, 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 I think. Um, I mean, at the very, at the very least, I mean, um, I, you must have more. I would have thought maybe rook f five is dangerous or something. I mean, you could even take, uh, get the queens off like that, and then play c five, which is uh, a very, very so good ending. Right, Scottish player Alice Lampard here. That's against. right. Yeah, that's right. She the top. So. Oh no, of course she's not the top Scott. Cassie's the top Scott. Indeed. So we've got Hannah O'Reilly against Raylin. Ooh, things have happened here. So um, uh, the um, uh, ah, interesting. I, I thought after all, I thought Raylin might well take on B four. Uh, whoops, sorry. Um, I thought Raylin might well take on B four because uh, she's got the A file there. So um, mm. you know, it's, normally you do indeed you try and keep everything closed, you know, in these positions. But I, I thought uh, that maybe taking on um, on um, uh, B four there and having the A file, you know, A three, those sort of squares would be um, um, even A one actually, you know, would uh, would be quite nice actually. But um, uh, but th that didn't happen. So now we've got this position. Um, 
yeah, quite an unclear one, really. Um, this White King's a little bit dodgy, um, but um, hard to break through uh, because White's quite uh, quite solid here. Um, Bishop F6 is a, a good, um, uh, looks like a good continuation. Maybe going to put just put the bishop on d4 in this great square and just um, uh, try it. And of course, I think at some stage you're going to going to try and get your rook over to um uh to, to g7 somehow you know and gives which gives you some uh some extra attacking chances um, i mean queen coming over to h6 is another one because this f4 pawn is a little bit uh is a little bit weak but um but yeah i mean this is a tough position why it's uh, quite well entrenched there so uh um i think it's black for choice but um but not easy to um yeah not not going to be easy to uh to make anything uh, of this one so it's going to be a tight uh, struggle and uh, three minutes against two. So it's definitely uh, hotting up there. Uh, thin mm -hmm. rock against the curious parrot. So this was this king's gambit that turned into a, an equal position. And uh, well, black's done very well. Uh, got an extra pawn there. So um, uh, this is quite good um, winning chances for black with a, yeah. with a, a pass d pawn like this. So um, the king and knight, uh, king knight and pawn endings. A rather similar in style to king and pawn ending so um yeah i'd say this was good winning chances the extra pawn let's have a look Just, uh... ah forgive me i've got to, got to leave for about uh, five minutes to uh, uh to uh, assist my parents with uh, with something sure so, uh, it's um uh yeah, this is florence wilson against susan baron shall i i'll share okay if you share your screen then uh, we can just uh come up uh... are you in there i'll stop my screen sharing wait, 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 wait. Play. i'll stop my screen sharing and then you can uh you can share yours and uh, i'll take that over okay so if we go close Sorry about this, guys. It's just uh, I'm uh, helping my parents out because uh, they're a, a little bit poorly at the moment. So uh, just helping them out with the uh, with the supermarket deliveries. I will be right back. One minute, Matthew. Do you want to just share your screen again? Because mine's oh, not, okay. not doing it. No worries. Unless that floating game's over. I'll get a game up and then we can do it live. There we Any are. It's done. Uh, here we are. Well, you could follow this one for a while. I'll be right back. I will really, we'll be back in um, in five seconds. So uh, it's uh, um, this is. Uh, or you could you want to follow Docky against John Spielman. Let's do that. Let's do Docky against. John. There we are. Docky against John Spielman. Here we come. I'll be right back. Okay. Well, so Docky against John Spielman is a very interesting lineup because they will have played each other numerous times um, over the years, and. Uh, and there was a, there was I remember a time when it was um, Doki's birthday blitz, and he invited a whole load of um, very strong blitz players, and uh, so they all had a kind of get together and played lots of blitz against each other. So they would probably even have played um, many times on this this kind of time control. Um, don't know if they played much online though. They would have played mainly in real life. It's, yeah, Doki is Grandmaster John Nunn, and he is playing against John Spielman. So they would, they've been teammates uh, for England in, um, presumably in junior events, uh, also in uh, open events and in senior events. So uh, they know each other really, really well, and they know each other's styles. Now, John Nunn um, is, uh, he knows his theory, uh, very, very well. And John Spielman likes to play a very unusual style. So it is a bit of a clash of styles. Um, and here we go. So, so white, no, which way around are they playing? John Spielman is black and John Nunn is white. Um, they have, it looks like a Karakan. Um, and white's got his knight in on to h5 um it's an absolute legend uh these two players 
Um, I don't even know who I would call to to win this game. I, it, it could be either way. John Nunn has been playing actually in some of the matches. I don't know if you know about the ECF matches against um, other countries. So sometimes we've had these um, blitz arenas, three plus two, and we've been uh, commentating on those. And Doki has won a couple of blitz arenas that we've been commentating on. Uh, so we found uh, in the morning once he, he, he might, the first round he... Uh, spends around warming up and then the rest of the afternoon he's completely unbeatable um, and and so he's actually very good at this time control and plays well and as you know John Spielman is absolutely excellent at this time control um, and uh, we saw his game with Gawain earlier. Uh, okay so now White has, uh, I can see Matthew's back, uh, is he back? I'm back. Yeah. 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 Yes. Hi. Well, yes. I was, uh, I, was, uh, I was letting you talk for a change because I've been uh, been talking all the time. So go for it, Natasha. Sure. Uh, so we've got White bringing the pawns in on the king side and going for a king side attack, um, which is very nice. The knight on h5 is always going to be a little bit annoying and dangerous. So black can't ever defend with things like g6 because. Uh, White will come in on f6, and uh, that'll be very dangerous. And if white gets, um, there you go, both knights are in now. And so those knights are, um, we're attacking on g7, so then John swaps off queens. And as we know, um, John Spielman really likes Zen games. I've said that before. Uh, but John Nunn is an absolute wizard at end games, and he even compiled kind of databases of, of end games. So um so them swapping queens off is is not too surprising i think they'll both be quite happy with that okay and so we've got this um e pawn coming in now you would think that would be you'd be able to round that up uh without too much trouble um so he's playing rook d3 uh, so that's partly looking at that advanced e pawn but also keeping control of this open d file. Um, and white can still think about, Arketi's looking good for seven out of seven now. Uh, amazing performance for her um, across the whole tournament, not even dropping a single draw. That just shows her strength. Okay, so now we have white has the extra pawn um, and is, is basically playing fairly for consolidating first. So uh, lining those rooks up on the second rank. Black's making counterplay, trying to swap off the pawns on the queen side um, and setting up this thing along the fourth line. Uh, okay. So I'm still thinking maybe white can kind of consolidate with the h3, yeah, and then, and then perhaps look to um, advance the f pawn. Uh, to sort of ask that knight to move. Um, okay, and so we're pawn up for white. I would, I would, I would. If I had to call it, I'd say a draw for this game um, because the black pieces are very, very active. So let's see what happens. And clock times. Uh, John Spillman's got a little bit more time on the clock. He's got one twenty-two. Um, and John Nunn, 27. Um, so, okay, uh, John Nunn's sort of gradually pushing forwards and black centralizing all his pieces. Oh, there's a fork uh, in on E4, so draw seems likely. Crowd thinks draw, I think a draw. Let's see. Yeah, actually, he missed knight D3. He could have played, he could have played knight D3 takes, uh, takes F4. But, oh. um, Talking, but um, uh, doesn't matter. I think, um, yeah. So maybe just repeat. Well, John's John's very tricky. I think John's I think John's uh, Spielman is is looking for. Uh, can I find a, a way to uh, to make some tricks here? I think. Uh, uh, but I think they might repeat now. Yeah, I think they're going to repeat. Ah, there's a draw. As let's have a quick look at uh, at Ketty then. Um, yeah, this is looking, this is looking quite, uh, yes, I'm here. I am here. Um, uh, this is looking pretty good for Ketty. 
Um, not 100% easy with those past pawns, but the problem is that this one is a is a big target and uh, um, long run, it's going to be hard. I mean, if you go something like king f3, then maybe um, I can play a move like rook h8, you know, and you just end up getting uh, getting stretched all over the board somehow. You know, I mean, that's the uh, that's kind of the problem. Um, so, and if you defend with rook h1, then my the pawn can advance with b4. It's that sort of thing that you can't, uh, you just find it hard. But king b6 was uh, played by Ketty. Maybe she's going to come with king a5, actually, just uh, just um, just be a bit careful and uh, um, and just try and, uh, um, yeah, you could also, you know, you could also just wait for a mistake from white, you know, because uh, this is a very hard position for white to defend. So uh, just playing, you know, cautiously around and maybe now move like king a5, for example, is uh, is pretty good technique as well. Um, so this move rook b4 is defending uh, e4 here. So, um, uh, yeah, rook h8 is sensible. I mean, the thing is, Ketty doesn't, there's not much time for both players. So, you know, it, it's it's a little bit... Um, um it's it's not easy it's not easy it's not trivial for black but uh maybe black's gonna play king c5 now yeah and uh actually white's white's struggling a bit now to find yeah, a move, make a move. <laughs> yeah um if the bishop yeah. moves you could maybe come yeah, in I, and block off the line to the pawn yeah i mean bishop bishop here is probably the best i guess <laughs> Um, or King G4. Okay, that's not a bad uh, a bad waiting move either. Um, yeah, you could play Bishop H5 check and then try and go Rook H6 to G6. That's not uh, impossible. Ah, I wonder whether Ketty's going to try and do that. Rook H6. Um, oh, Raylan's won. Raylan wins. Whoa, let's have a look. It was looking um, like there was still a lot a lot to happen in that game, wasn't it? Indeed. Oh, but they so annoying. They disappear from your list when um, uh, like that. But uh, well done, Raylin. Well done. Fantastic. Bishop to d1 to a4. Hmm. I'm not sure about that one. The bishop was so well placed on uh, on uh, on this diagonal, attacking this pawn. I'm not mm. quite sure what the bishop's doing on this square. Um. It's also. I mean, see. You know, you're much more likely to be able to to push this pawn now with. Uh, I'm not not hundred percent happy with it, but maybe uh, Ketty's also looking to play something like King D4 at some stage. I mean, this is very difficult for White to defend. I mean, uh, 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 you know, practically this is uh, this is quite difficult. Rook C1. Now, I think King D4 is going to happen. I think this is Ketty's plan. Indeed. So she's looking for this one. The only problem is now that if you take this one. Then takes takes and d6 happens. And I mean it's, it's quite dangerous this. So I don't think you can do this. Um maybe bishop b3 now, maybe, and then bring the bishop to c4. That's that's a good one. That's a good one, I think. Bishop yeah. c bishop b3. That should be pretty good. Because if c7, then we can block off the c file with c4 and there's no danger. Ah, uh, that's that's quite a good one. Bring the bishop round uh, here. So um Actually, I mean, yeah, even Bishop A2 would be possible. Um, Bishop A2 and pick up E4. But this feels safer somehow because then you can move uh, you can move the uh, the king back to C5 and play B4, you know, just no uh, no worries whatsoever. So looking very, very good for Ketty there. Uh, oh, let's have a look at this one. Um, oh, King E4. Don't we have uh, G6 here, actually? Um, we do. Wow, it's going to be sharp this one. Um, so I guess we should take this one. So this is Georgia headlong against Kate Walker. Rook c7. That's a bit risky. Um, can, I, I could take that one simply. I think. Could you just go g? But I think it's. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I can go. Rook takes f7 is also uh, decent. Um, so, are you going to take that and go rook f8? Maybe that's maybe still uh, still okay like that. I mean, rook c4 and b4 is 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 way too much. I think. Um, 
I mean, it's in, yeah, no, no, I think it's, it's too much. Um, I think you should, you should really just take on here and then go Rook F8 afterwards and uh, try and hold it that way. Um, so now we're going to liquidate down to what? Oh, D4, my goodness. Okay. So what do we uh, do? Got, yeah. Well, King A5 now is, uh, okay. is happening. Um, so, yeah, I'm not quite sure what you're doing here now. Um, I mean, B4 is, is sort of vaguely possible, but you, then you go Rook A4, Rook C5 check King A6. I mean, the King's stuck on the corner, but you're not going to get him. And um, uh, and the, the big problem is that um, after um, B4, Rook A4, something like Rook C5 check King A6, you're pinned across here. So yeah. you've even got to waste an extra tempo, you know, and after King F3 or something, or maybe King D5, um, well, I'll go G7. And I mean, you know, this is uh, Rook F8 is threatened here. So, uh, I mean, Lord knows what's happening here. It's, it's really, uh, I, I think, you know, I think uh, the white's actually doing quite well. Um, so, um, uh, well, let's just uh, swap the board around. It's just easier to uh, to see like that. So Rook A8 check will go King B6. Uh, uh, probably, oh, we could even take on B5, actually, because Rook A8's been played. So, um, whoops, King B5 now. And all of a sudden, all of the pawns are dropping. Yeah. Oh dear! What a oh! Everything looks so under control for Black, and uh, a few moves in the rook ending, and um, and it's uh, oh dear me! I think should maybe Let's... put a rook on d four. Yeah, I think it's bad. Just have a look at, at uh, Ketty here. So um, uh, um, yeah, she, she lost one of her pawns, um, but she's now got a king in a great square, and the bishop on b one is uh, passive. And actually, you, uh, white sim black simply going to go rook here and takes there, and of course this knight on d6 is uh, is holding all these pawns. So uh, I think that's going to be um, that's going to be good enough. I, I suppose the only thing that you've got to watch out for uh, rook a3, rook a1 rather. That should work out, shouldn't it? Rook um, rook a1, rook takes, rook take, rook here. Um, I guess rook d7. Um, and then we'll just go c3, take some c2, and uh, yeah, this is going to work out. And then rook c, oh, rook c6. Oh, actually, 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 wait a minute. Here, check. Yeah, I mean, you'll you'll have to you'll have to give back that rook if you're going to do it this way, and uh, uh, and take here. But this is obviously winning for uh, yeah, black. Yeah, that's enough. So um, I think Ketty will. Uh... Oh, uh, this is uh, something like this actually happening. C7 and now um, uh, should be C3. I think that should be uh, fine. I suppose you could even go. Um, no, it doesn't really make much difference. I was wondering whether Rook D7, uh, you could go Knight C8, whether that would be uh, a bit quicker. But uh, I think um, uh, no, I think this is all going to be uh, all going to be very good for Black. So it looks like Ketty is going to make it to uh, seven out of seven. Um, what have we got here? So we've got this rook ending now. It's all, oh dear me, Black's lost all oh, the queen side pawns here. <laughs> chess, chess is heartbreaking sometimes, it really is. It's uh, um, oh, There's no way White's just going to play king b5 uh, and uh, bring the king all the way around. And there's no way for the black king to uh, to get back there. So um, looking like um, uh, a turnaround there and it's going to be a win for uh, for White there. Um, and it looks like Ketty has won there. Oh, no, not yet, not yet. Still still uh, thinking. Has played C3. Uh, so expecting this to uh, to happen very soon. Um, not much time left here for, uh, for Lara Puttar. Uh, King E3 has been played, but now C2. C2, yeah. C2 is... Uh, is the end of the line there? I think. I mean, you can you can pin the uh, pawn, but then we come back with king c three and uh, c one queen is going to be it. Now, important for Ketavan not to press the wrong button, not to press, <laughs> <laughs> not to press the draw or the resigns button. So rook g2 played, but king c3 now, and uh, should be enough. That should be enough. Rook takes c2, maybe it's going to be played. Uh, 
No, it's been a really tough fight. And, um, uh, yeah, I mean, just at, at one moment there, uh, just before um, White played uh, uh, C6, I resigned. So well done, Ketavan. That's um, uh, a huge result, seven out of seven. A Fisher-like result there. Yeah, I was, I was just saying, you know, just before uh, in this position, just before um, uh, um, here White played C6, which, you know, gave the knight this square. I think if White had, uh, had played knight B4 here, was still, um, uh, I think it was anybody's game at this stage. Um, rook a4, I go um, rook b1. Rook a8, I go rook a2. Knight g5. You know, at any stage I can go bishop g2. And then I'm just going to bring my king over to c3 probably. And then at some stage I'll play, you know, c6 and d6. Could have been um, could have been still a very very interesting game that one. But um, but after the um, the mistake in the uh, in the game c6. Then um, very smooth performance from Ketavan. So super well done there. Yeah, I'm going to tweak uh, it. <laughs> so um, let's have a look. We've got um, a few more games going on. We've got um, Gawain Jones uh, against, oh, William Claridge Hansen. But something's gone wrong for Gawain here. Ooh. So uh, a terrible pawn structure. Um I'm not sure about that last move, Rook C4. I think F6 would have been uh, a great move because here, of course, Gawain is striking back and um, uh, trying to uh, to get some sort of compensation in the, in the past D pawn. So I guess you've got to go E5 here as uh, as black uh, because I don't think any of these um, there's plenty of uh, of, uh, of D takes E6 is happening. So E5, I think, and now maybe F4 from. Uh, F4, yeah, F4 is quite a good move here. So um, um, E4, okay. Well, we might just uh, throw in an F3 here as well, just to, uh, why not? Why not keep on going and just keep that, uh, you know, just try and get those uh, that open uh, those open files. That's maybe not silly at all. Yeah, Gawain's done it. Um, yeah, this is uh, uh, quite interesting now. You're not going to be able to. I mean, as black, you really want to control this type of position, but it's not going to be easy to do. Could go um, uh, rook e8, maybe. That's possible. Um, just to uh, f5. That's another another possibility. Fe. It's just that you end up with this weak pawn. Um, and I mean, yeah. <laughs> Knowing Wayne, you might even play f5. But f5, I think uh, there might be a knight e5 that could be annoying. Um, so, um, might just, uh, d6 is possible, but we might just end up bringing our king in there. We need a good, um, we need a better move than, uh, than that, really. Uh, a bishop g5 is, uh, rook c8, really. So rook f2. Okay, so Gawain, um, looking for, uh, for f5 here. Um, knight b6, f5. Okay, wow. Um... Is this really happening? Um, I still think that William's uh, got quite good chances here. I mean, rook d5 looks interesting. If f6, I'll just go king f7 and block. And fg, um, hg, well, the king's got this square, can escape. So, man, knight's not, knight's not great, though. Um, anything else for black? King f7, yeah, I was going to say that move. I'm not sure, though. It's just... Um, I'm a bit uh, a bit nervous about um, getting my king over. Oh, rook b1. Those switchbacks, they're always... That's very clever from Gawain. That is very, very clever. Uh, now, I think black is in a bit of trouble. Right. Rook d6. Black's in a, no, rook d6, we've got bishop f4. So, uh, um, rook b7 now. Whoa! William, that's a brave one. Um Right. What have we got? Um, I mean, h4 is a possibility. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, f is also quite dangerous. Bishop g7. There were a number of uh, possibilities. Well played. Uh, ooh, uh, that's a risky one. Uh, bishop g7. I was actually wondering about, about playing e3 for black, actually, rather than playing king e5. But, uh, but there was some, um, it was actually, um, a, a really sneaky one because bishop g7 would have been mate there. G5. It was, uh, oh, okay. It, you, Expecting bishop g5, but bishop g7 would have been mate uh, after e3. Hi, so king d6, 
Hey, Berlin, well played. Yay, finishing on a win. Very Woo! nice, very nice. And and we no, no. qualified as well for the Blitz this, this evening. Fantastic. So uh, what have we got here? Rook F4. Crazy position. Um, so is Gawain going to play F7? He is. Um, oh, my goodness. What are we, how are we going to do this? Uh, mm -hmm. King E6, maybe? The problem is black's going to have c4 white's going to have c4 yay well done raylin um maybe go king c6 the, the problem is if i if i um go king e6 and, and white queens and everything yeah. then uh, c4 follows at the end so oh rook h4 check no that can't be good that can't be good you can't have you can't possibly have time for that uh rookie three here maybe oh then let's rook f7 that's rather annoying. Um, C4 would be quite decent, followed by F8 queen. Yeah, that's the one. And I'm afraid that's... Uh, I'm afraid that one's gone. Um, oh, William had such a good position. But um, and I think C takes D5 now, King F4, and that's it. Yeah, well done, Gawain. Oh, um, right. How do we know? I'm going to just check on the scores of the tournament. Does it... I guess... Can oh, good Lord. Uh, Matthew Wadsworth against Richard Pert. So, um, uh, oh, this is looking very good for um, for White here. Um, swapping off to Matthew Wadsworth, trying to swap off the Queen E8. Ah, oh, and then, then we're going to escape with Bishop C5, aren't we? Or Bishop B3. Oh, Gawain. Bishop. Okay, so, so um, F4, F4. we've got Gawain on seven, uh, okay. going into round nine. So he'll be on eight now. Um, and that he's a point and a half clear from John Spielman, who's on five and a half, who's playing Nick, Nick Pert on four. And then Amit Ghazi and John Nunn, Doki, um, are both on four out of four. And then Ezra Kirk also on four against Mikhail Sadiq on four. Um, Matthew Wadsworth, three and a half. Richard Pert, three and a half. And then other oh, my points, goodness. Uh, Look at this one. This was, uh, this, was, this was so, uh, this was so, ah, oh, it looks so winning for, for Matthew. Oh, Queen B5. Queen B5 was mate. Queen B5 yeah. was mate. Yeah. Oh no! You know, I don't. Ah, oh, I don't know whether whether you win this one with uh, with with uh, with white. I'm not. I'm not very sure about that, to be honest. Oh my goodness me! Ah. Oh no! No, why? Why knight d5? <laughs> why would you do that? Just stayed with king d3. Just just. Uh, oh, this is all. This is just. This is just lost now. Oh, f5. Oh. Setting up a bit of a fork there, but uh, I think we move the king back. Our oh, queen c, queen one is fine. F six now. Oh dear me, that was uh, that was so close. Such a good defence by uh, by Richard. Mm. Um, should be four uh, queen f one. I would say f seven ninety six queen c eight. This would be my choice. There's probably a lot more queen d one. Okay, queen b3, three. oh, queen e2, oh, dear me. <laughs> queen takes e6 now. Yes, there we are. Yeah. Ugh, that's all going to be it. Uh, Richard Perk carrying on there, It's uh, but I think this is, uh, yeah, I mean, that's is very, very short of time. I mean, that's the, the point. Um, that's the only thing that could sort of go wrong that you get. Um, I mean, I, I had this, I've had this a few times, uh, funnily enough, with Shogi, that um, uh, I got so nervous. Um, because shogi uh, is played with a time control you can't build up time you've only got a maximum of uh, of uh, 30 seconds or or uh, 15 seconds per move and um, i got into a, such a state so uptight that my hand was shaking so much that i couldn't um uh i couldn't make a move physically anymore and uh, i lost on time it was terrible oh, but um um but anyway um so was this the last round actually of the blitz no no one more round so let's one uh, more round okay let's so this is round eight of nine. Um, okay, so we're going to be in the... I guess uh, there's um, Shreyas we could check in on, Shreyas Royale. And I'm not sure whether any of the games will still be going for this round, though. I think they're all finished by now. So uh, he's killer... What, what is Shreyas? Killer M, killer M and then some numbers, isn't he? Yeah, I've got 3,000 in my mind, but I will find it properly. Uh, I... Yes, Richard Han is very good. 3,000. 
it's a very good um it's a very good uh he's uh, no so i think they've uh, finished for this round so uh Oh, well, we're going to catch the last round of the Blitz final. Fantastic. And Andrew Brett, yeah, it was GM Norwich, whatever it was. That was Andrew Brett. Uh, GM Norfolk. Shogi theme film, no, no success. No success. It's um, they're, um, uh, From time to time, the, the Japanese embassy used to have some showings of, uh, of Japanese films. So, um, um, and I, I've seen a, a, an advert once for a, for a shogi themed film, but those sort of things aren't going to happen anymore, of course. So, um, it's, uh, yeah, no, I'd love, I'd, I'd absolutely love to, uh, to, to do that. I looked, at, I've looked, um, really all over the place to try and uh, get hold of, uh, of some of them, but it just doesn't seem to be, uh, doesn't seem to be there. And of there, course, there, you know, there's a shogi, um, you know, like there's the go. I've sort of forgotten the word anime type thing. Uh, yeah, there's a shogi one of those. I'm 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 sure, and I saw one, uh, but I forgot all about it, and I've got to dig it out. Um, this will be over a year ago. I mean, um, the thing is, of course, is that um, you know I, it would be great to get a Japanese film, but I really would like it with English subtitles yeah. as well. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, that's the because um, I was looking at some um, to see whether from Amazon Japan actually I was having a look because they're incredible. They um, uh, you can get all sorts of stuff. I actually got a book on Alpha Zero from uh, um, from uh, Amazon Japan, written in Japanese, but um, I just sort of thought, well, you know, I mean, uh, you why not read uh, it yet? <laughs> it's, uh, no, 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 no. It's not. Uh, that's not the point. But it was just to, uh, you know, to have a book, another book about Alpha Zero, because I think there's only been ours and um, and this one. Um, but uh, um, yeah, but uh, um, I mean, you have to um, uh, you have to have it in English subtitles, and uh, yeah, I haven't been able to find anything like that. But I will keep on looking because uh, I really would love to uh, love to do that. It's uh, Japanese culture is really um, yeah, it's really really amazing. You know, just. Uh, uh, so many nice uh, facets to it that are different from uh, you know from ours and um, and some amazing things you know some amazing games of course which is uh, how you really get into it. So um, now just waiting for these uh, for these games to start. Is, is women's finished now? Do we? I'll give a rundown of the results. Women's round March round. comes like a lion. Ooh. Yeah, women's no. game are all finished. So uh Ketty won, Nina won, uh Trisha won converted that game against Tashika. It was looking good. Olivia Smith beat Maria Melianova. I thought Maria's position was looking good at one point there, if I'm remembering it right. Alice won against Zoe Varney. Um Imogen won against Julie O. Raylin won. Uh Curious Parrot won that end game. Um, and Georgia, we saw the Rook and Pawn ending, and Florence won against Susan Barry, Suzanne Barry, sorry. Um, yeah, so the two, I don't think we caught the end of it, Olivia Smith and Alice Lampard, both of those were white wins in the end. Yes, please, Mark, that would be fantastic. Um, so, so uh, Ketty won. Do you, do you have any idea who uh, who came second? Yep. Uh, so second, so uh, Nina got five points. Trisha on four and a half. Dagny on four and a half. Lara on four and a half. Actually, it's easier if I look at this ranking list. Um, so yeah, so Ketty first. Nina in second. Uh, wow. Well, well third done. Place between Dagny. Trisha and Olivia. Fantastic, wonderful. So um, uh, yeah, I mean some uh, some uh, the experienced players, of course, towards the top as well. Ketty, of course, uh, far ahead, but uh, lots of juniors at the top as well. So um, ah, fantastic, really, really good. It's um, now nah, still waiting for this last round to start of the blitz. Can just um, uh, have a look. Oh, um, uh, what did? Any interesting uh, games there? Well, this was quite a good uh, a finish. Um, Richard Pert beating uh, Peter Large. So uh, uh, I am Peter Large, um, well known from the English uh, um, weekend circuit. Um, when I was um, nine or 10, so, you know, sort of uh, 1984, 1985, he was playing um, 
all the time on the English weekend circuit. A you lot of uh, Ivory Quick play a lot of times. Exactly, I played him there a few times it indeed. Was, it was every month at least, wasn't it? And uh, and he was always there. Yeah, I played him there many times, and um, a very good player, very good, uh, very good technique and all that. Uh, not a chess professional, but uh, um, uh, but became an IM, and uh, and I started playing again, playing playing in your area, Natasha, I believe, Epsom. Yes, I think he, I think he lives near there. Ah, we've got. Verdonot A, last round, playing Barcelonski. That's uh, Michael Sedkish. Um, I don't know. I don't know uh, who. I don't know as a player actually. But uh, we're going to get a King's Indian because Gawain. Um, he either plays Benko or King's Indian in the uh, in Blitz uh, in Blitz games. Knight B D seven. Avoid uh, one. His move order there, avoiding the exchange of queens after uh, E five D takes E five. Bishop G five rather unusual, uh, I think. Bishop H four. Um, we'll see what Gawain does. G5, maybe. C6, um, also possible. Ah, G5. Knight H5, maybe. Um, I think that wouldn't be... Um, if it is uh, if it is actually possible. I think it is actually possible, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, we've got this weakness on F5, but we've got maybe Knight G3, maybe Knight F4. And why it's got to work out what to do with this uh, uh, d4 square? Because I mean, d4 is a little bit um, uh, a little bit uh, weakened because the bishops uh, moved over here. Um, have a quick look at John Spielman. The opening John Spielman against Amit Ghazi. So John playing one of his uh, favourite vegetal systems, which is uh, Bishop g5 against the King's uh, Indian, and then playing e3 rather than e4. So just trying to keep it solid. And actually, as we mentioned during uh, Rosalind's game, actually that uh, against systems where you put the bishop out. Um, early together with c4, um, then c5 systems are often uh, quite uh, effective. You know, just uh, the bishop comes across here and this bishop is not protecting any of these queenside squares. So um, that's what um, Amit has done. And he's playing uh, actually a um, Benoni structure now. So that should be quite interesting. Let's go back to um, uh, to Gawain, see what's happening. He's got his knight in on f4 now. Indeed, and I think he's going to look to bring it round maybe to d4 afterwards. So, um, uh, ah, that's looking uh, quite a good opening. I'm expecting probably c6 now. Oh, knight c5 first. Yeah, no worries about that. That knight's going to come into uh, into d4 here. So, uh, um, knight to e6. Um, knight c2. Yeah, knight d4 is possible. Probably c6 first, I think, just to make sure that white can't bring a knight. Oh, no, okay. So um, I was actually wondering slightly about could we maybe take his looks very ugly and then go knight d5? Just what I was uh, wondering about there. Um, just to uh, to try and break that pressure. Otherwise, this is looking quite... Uh, um, I think this is maybe your one opportunity to get rid of this guy. Otherwise, um, uh, um, I'm not quite sure you ever will. Um, now look, John Spielman against Amit Ghazi. So uh, this pawn looking weak, as always, in the modern Benoni. Um, actually, that's going to be a little problem to defend it because we've got knight c4 coming in afterwards. Maybe we should. Maybe we do have to play knight e5 in this position. If we get hit by f4, it's annoying, but we, at least we can come back to d7 um, because I'm not quite sure how else you defend it. If you go bishop f8, I'll go knight c4 here, um, attack d6. Oh, Gwen's taking a pawn now. Pawn up. Oh, nab to pawn. My goodness. Yeah, so, uh, uh, and actually there's this one as well. This is looking very, very good, very, very quickly for uh, Gawain. Uh, Queen d5, c6, um, automatic move. Um, I think it's only going to get worse for, <laughs> only going to get worse for uh, for white this, I'm afraid. Um, Queen c5 maybe, but we'll, we'll probably go bishop e6. So, uh, uh, Queen d8, okay, rook d8. Um so, um, but black in complete control here, Bishop B6 coming in. And uh, um, so, Knight E3, um, Bishop F8, that's a very good move. Stopping the pawn from advancing, maybe looking to bring the Bishop into C5. If you're going to chase it away with Rook B1, we're going to play the Knight over to D3. Um, to, um, there's a Sicilian, or Harry Grieve, to be more fair, has gone into a Sicilian against Docky. Uh, Ah, Doki, Doki, Doki. I can't see Doki at the moment, so let me just uh, serve. 
Docky One. Yes. Where is Docky One? Um, here we are. Okay, so we've got a, this open Sicilian white's played knight b6, rook d8. Um, now, uh, normally you'd say that e5 really has to be the move there. Um, if bishop f3, maybe we take with, um, I'm going to take back with a pawn on f3, I think, if you do that. Gf3, indeed, so just to keep um, the knight away from there. Um, and if you go something like knight h5, which I think is probably indicated, then we're going to play f5. Okay, let's. Um, I'd expect f5 uh, um, as a move here now. And well, it's all a, all a bit of a question, really. Can uh, um, can Black Castle? This is a big a big question. Uh, we might actually just have f6 against uh, if Black Castles. Let me just check that one. Mm -hmm. If um, if uh, f5 castles, we might have f6 here because if gf, I can go queen g4 check and knight g7, I've got bishop h6, which actually wins. The only question is whether something like king h8 here, um, do we have a move like bishop c5 or something? You know, when, when this knight, but I think you go knight c4 in this position and you're, um, you're doing all right. Okay. So... Uh, I think that f5 actually looks quite strong for Doki. f6, he's played f6. Doki, Doki doesn't miss his tactics. Um, so this is quite worrying. Now, I'm not quite sure. I think I'll go to gf. Okay, knight f6. Mm, takes, takes. Uh, I guess, uh, well, the thing is b4 is hanging, which was uh, I thought was a shame to lose another pawn. But maybe uh, at least you keep your king safe. You're going to get in d5. Ah, queen d6, that's even more. That is maybe even more awkward. Um, now, black doesn't want to exchange off queens. Uh, so queen c2. And I guess Doki's going to take on d7 now. So, um, uh, but okay. I mean, uh, maybe black just have to grab the pawn on b2 and hope for the best. Um, that is possible. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things hanging here for... Uh, um, both sides. Oh, Bishop H4. Okay, that's a that's a, a clever one. I think uh, he was probably slightly worried that uh, Bishop B2 you might go something like Queen G3. That was, uh, but this is um, Queen G6. Okay, but now King H1 here, and this is looking oh Rook G2 even even stronger. Uh, Bishop D4 I think is going to come in soon. Bishop H6 is also very very strong. Uh, Bishop H6 is uh, very good. Oh Queen B4 even. Doki not even bothering. Doki's, Doki's just taking the bishop on h4 and the rook on f8. And uh, uh, Gawain Jones won that very quickly. So uh, <laughs> he's nine out of nine for Gawain, isn't it? Wow. He just, he is, that, is a good, that is a good result. Yeah. Um, okay, so Doki winning this clearly. I think queen f6 is going to come in uh, here or bishop f6 even, whichever you want to do. Let's just have a quick look at uh, John Spielman against Amit Garzi. Yeah. So uh, John uh, is a pawn up. But um, uh, queen a2 now, I guess, um, just uh, would be a, a decent idea. Queen c2, sorry, even better, actually, stopping bishop c7 there. Um, not going to be easy for John to uh, to make something of this. Um, so now Amit is going to take this pawn. Now, the question is, can you emerge and uh, and do something? You've got to hit the knight. Uh, oh, queen d4, ah. Um is this going to be anything at all? I wouldn't have thought so, really. Oh, 92, that's a bit risky. Bishop b5. Oh, <laughs> but you're stopping the king from coming out. Actually, that was probably that was probably a good move. That was just, um, but it's a bit risky, you know, just uh, you sort of say, oh, you know, put your knight back, you know, and then you're not going to get it trapped. But um, uh, quite a sharp ending, this, um, because uh, bishop g7, excellent. Um, if h, if you, oh, knight c5. What's he doing? What's that? What's that idea? Oh no, this is not good. Bishop g seven now, stopping knight c three. Okay, bishop b three. Oh, that was a big mistake from uh, strange mistake from Amit there, um, because now White's just got got a past h pawn here. Oh, g five. That's a good idea. Um, so still very good, but um, uh, going to be a little bit more because if you manage to liquidate the knight and pawn for these two pawns, that's all you need to do. Uh, the resulting positions are draw. 
mm. uh, with this color bishop and this pawn on b7 and pawn on b6 so um uh that is a draw so um easier said than done to reach it but uh that is a draw 93 f5 i know Oh, he's getting, he's getting, oh, he's getting a bit drawn away there, but you never know, knight d5. Um, let's have a look. It's all you need, all you need, knight f6 check, king g5, oh, king h4. Oh, ooh, ah. Okay, so, oh, John has triangulated, my goodness, at this speed. Uh, <laughs> king f3 now, g5 will take. Oh, king g4, king e6, that's a strange, that's a strange move. We go knight e3 now. Yeah. Knight f5. Uh, this should be drawn. Knight e3. You can't stop us going knight c4. Wow, a meet. Well held. Well held. Well held. Or knight a5 even, if you're playing for the win. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there we are, draw. Well played, both players. That was uh, uh, excellent effort from a meet to, uh, to hold that. Wonderful. So Gawain Jones wins. <laughs> Peter Large is a great name. Um, uh, um, yeah, um, uh, Gawain Jones wins the uh, the Blitz with nine out of nine. A fantastic performance because uh, there were some very good Blitz players in there. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, just uh, well played, Gawain. So that was it. We saw the uh, the the women's um, the women's uh, championship being won amazingly convincingly by Ketavan with seven out of seven. What have we got this uh, this afternoon, this evening rather, Natasha? This evening we have the championship. So we have the championship. It is round seven of nine. So this is the last round before we have a break for New Year. Um, and we have Daniel Fernandez on board one against Michael Adams. And Matthew Turner, so, so GM Daniel Fernandez against GM Michael Adams, and then GM Matthew Turner against I am Amit Ghazi, who we just saw in action just now. Uh, then we have Grigor Toshek against Matthew Wadsworth, and we have Bogdan Lalic against Mohammed Ayan Ishmael, um, which is Diamondaut, if I remember correctly. Oh, look at board five! Look at board five! And board five, we have. If I just go back, uh, we have Tom Villiers against Tristan Cox. So uh, this, this is a rock and roll. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. Um, and then Peter Finn, Tom Gorman, and Harry Grieve against Julia Volovich um, on board seven. Uh, okay, looking further down. We have uh, well, one we're going to watch is also Tashika Aurora against Oscar Idol. We we saw from the stream today that um, Oscar and Tashika play similar openings and are also both tactical players. So that should be a very interesting matchup too. Okay, so we're looking forward to it and we will see you again um, this evening. We will start from 6.50, game starting at 7.00. Fantastic. Thanks very much for watching and see you this evening. Thank you for watching.